Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Reality Kingdom, where we talk all things reality TV or whatever. Per ah. as you see, this is the best episode ever because we are joined by the wonderful, wonderful world of Aza. Aza, how you doing? <laughs> yes okay so oz is going to join us today to talk about this week and big brother week eight or whatever all the stuff that's going on and oh yeah, it's, it's been a, a week it's a good week to talk jesus because it's been a week Ooh, uh, yeah, it's been a week <laughs> oh god so shoot we can hop right into it um so and oz for- anytime you want to just cut in just cut in in, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, first of all, we started off the week with um, a double eviction. So, the double eviction happened. Jasmine went home and Joseph went home. And when Joseph went home, it kind of hit our girl Taylor a little, a little, a lot. Um, and I feel like that, first of all, I kind of want to speak on Taylor and her relationship with Joseph because I really, really appreciate that because you see throughout the week. The reason she got so emotional is because she stated that he was the first person to speak to her as a friend, like to actually care about her. And considering the events of this week, I think it's important to kind of mention this topic because um, Joseph caring about Taylor just as a human, you know, I feel like really, really spoke to her in a way deeper than even the game. And in that house, even though you're playing a game, they're still people, you know, they still want a friend. Like, yeah, we in this game and I got to get you out, but I still want a friend. And I really think that's what Joseph was to her. And I really like that. I don't know. How y'all feeling about that? I I feel the same way. I I, I want to spend in house. I know what it's like to feel lonely, to feel like people are not around you or with you. And I'm very appreciative that CBS chose to highlight Joseph being a friend to to Taylor. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, people need to understand, like, being in that house, like, you, you, I can't explain it, but you just feel like you feel like every you basically feel like you're trying to fight, trying to die. And so, like mm-hmm. when people are around you and doing things, like you're just avoiding death. And so you can sense when people feel like their best chance of death is not being around you. And I'm certain that Taylor felt that. So mm-hmm. somebody in that moment to give, you know, to give her that voice of kindness and to be that like leaning shoulder for her to be upon, that means a lot. And I'm appreciative of Joseph for doing that. I understand what has happened before him doing that. I understand that she's been ostracized. I understand all those things. But I will also still give accolades to Joseph for in that time, whether people feel for his game or for not, for being that first stepping stone to Taylor to for her being able to have an actual spot in this game. And I think that's a lot to be able to speak of. And I admire that personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, like Joseph was great. Like when, when he turned 25 and really just came <laughs> into the game as he should have, like, you know, it was it was really through Taylor and, and, and he brought her in so much. You know, it, it got a little chaotic at times, but you know, I'm I was personally happy that Taylor got brought into the game in general. Like she had a chance to play and a lot of that was through Joseph. So it does suck. And I feel like that analogy to it being death is like so real because like when you're watching anytime, like someone gets evicted that people are close with, they're like in tears crying. Mm -hmm. Cause like, I can definitely see how in this environment, like for example, I say this all the time. It's so weird. Cause like, all of these real world issues are happening outside. And the biggest thing that someone is worried about inside the big brother house is, Oh my God, who's going to win POV? Literally we outside. It's we, we going to go into another depression and they upset because somebody else is HOH. I mean, a recession, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. We got a lot of stuff going on out here, but I'm like, Taylor. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> So it's just so funny. So it definitely, I can definitely see how losing someone in that game feels like it's a part of you. And it does suck. But also, like, shout out to, like, Monty kind of becoming, like, that rock in a way um, for her now that uh, Joseph has left a little bit. What, <laughs> what's the fact, Isla? What's the fact? Are you? Are, I'm, working, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm good. Monty, if you see this, like, I'm working on you. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on you. I'm the same way. Some people done. And turn with Monty and you know for me, Monty reminds me so much of X in many ways. Number one, but number two, my 
nigga. Oh, sorry. Oh, you can say it. Oh, my bruh, yo. Like, <laughs> you know, try Taylor in them beginning weeks. Oh, I cannot get over that. As a black man, it's okay to do whatever you do to her. I cannot right. forget that. Yes. Mm. The I, exact same way. Here's my thing. Like, I, here's my thing. One of the biggest things that I commend him for, and I'm going to say this outside and inside, no matter what, it takes a lot for you to come to a recognition while you're in the house rather than you seeing social media afterward and changing mm-hmm. your tune. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you all that none of the men on my season did. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and with that being said, keeping right? it real, uh, like the reality kingdom. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. real, like, if we're going to be real. But hey. I commend him for reaching that in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, as a black woman, I guess, and now I can see things like being outside the game. I got to work on like seeing that stuff that he did that triggered me and literally like made me cry and hurt me inside what he did to Taylor. That stuff made me cry. Like I can't, mm-hmm. I can't, I don't like to use my platform to condemn anyone. I've never done that. Um, but I'll be very honest and raw about my feelings. Like seeing the way he treated and the tr- like that, sh- that stuff made me actually cry inside. And so I'm working through those things, but I can see that what he gave Taylor was a genuine apology and I'm working towards that. And at the end of the day, that's up to Taylor to decide what she wants for herself to move forward. That's not up to me. I'm not going to exactly. put any type of like expectation on what needs to be done. So my apologies from my faces. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I definitely, I definitely agree. Like, I, I, I'm definitely in that same boat. It's like I'm watching. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping an eye out because mm-hmm. he says some nasty stuff, and you know, I think he's definitely grown. But I would hate, you know, I always feel with Big Brother like a lot of people can kind of get away with saying certain things and because they have certain accolades in the game, it goes unnoticed. And I'm really hoping like, cause Monty has improved in the game. And I do think he's on the path to potentially win. And I would just hate that if he did win, he doesn't get the chance or kind of get clouded by acknowledging what he said, because there are some things I would love for him to address specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Um, so, at the beginning of the week, we play the head of household competition. It is, ain't it the tidy, tiny, the tiny, the tiny, the tiny, H-O-H. tiny well, HOH. Well, it was tiny V though, but not uh, tiny HOH. Tiny HOH and Turner wins. And th- it's interesting because the setup going into this week is that the outsiders just came in and it's four of them. And then the insiders are in and it's four of them. So it was kind of like, is it four V four? And Turner was with the outside crew alongside Kyle, Alyssa, and Terrence. So it was like, is he going to just stick with them or is he going to um, go back to the leftovers, which was everyone else in the house? What was he really going to do? And according to his um, diary rooms, it seemed like he was finna stick like solidly alongside the outsider. So it was like looking scary for, well, my faves. I don't know who y'all faves are, but it was looking <laughs> scary for my faves. Cause I was like, dang, Taylor, my Ganon, whoop, whoop, whoop. So he wins the HOH um, and immediately promises everybody's safety. Now, this is like the third time this season somebody has just promised everybody's safety, and I don't think I have a problem with it, because Taylor did it. Um, Damn near Michael did it when he won HOH, but it's like... Um, but Daniel it's did it. <laughs> Daniel did it, and it's fine, but um, but why are you doing that? But it doesn't matter. So he promised everybody's safety, and then he decided that maybe he should stick with the leftovers initially. And he was like, oh, dang. Maybe Brittany has always been so close to me. Michael mm-hmm. has always been so close to me. So I was kind of conflicted. And I kind of want to ask, like, what would y'all do at Turner's position at the beginning of the week? Like, you know, mm-hmm. would y'all have went back to the leftovers? Would y'all have stuck with the new alliance? I don't know. Like, I, I, I really don't know. I think... You go, you go first. Oh, I was just going to say, and this thing, because this is something that a lot of, like, I think people were saying about Turner's game, that essentially Turner is now with Kyle, which means that 
he is kind of in the same position that Kyle was in at the beginning of this week, which personally I don't think is true. I I do think Kyle, after all of the things he did in exposing the leftovers and turning on uh, Michael Brittany and uh, Taylor and them, he did need to make a big move, which is getting out Monty or Taylor. I don't think Turner needs to necessarily do that. I think Turner fit resorting back to I should just put up Alyssa and Terrence was his best call because at the end of the day, he had a relationship with Taylor. He had a relationship with Monty, which he still is continuing to have now. And he had something with Michael and Brittany. He was throwing all four of those connections away for what Kyle was trying to build to keep Alyssa safe. No shade. Like, it was literally it. So I feel like him choosing to then turn on the leftovers because Kyle came in and kind of was like, you know, this is the move that we need to make. You know, we can't go back from what we did. I felt like to me, it was Kyle putting a lot of what he felt like the position that he was in. And I just don't think Turner could have, was in that position. Realistically, if he puts up Alyssa and Terrence, and then Michael still wins veto, Michael does not use, and then Bloop, Alyssa or, or Terrence goes, and then he has the other leftovers num- numbers keeping him safe. And if Kyle goes home, Kyle goes home. It doesn't matter. I just feel like he ended up putting all his eggs in one basket and then that basket got kicked over because Tyler is not going <laughs> home regardless. I feel like I, I agree completely. I I got a lot of flack and Twitter hate for my tweet last week and when I said that the decision that Terrence made was not a bad decision. And the decision basically was to listen to what Kyle said, go ahead and take out the person he wanted to take out anyway, which was Joseph, Yeah, and chill and let the fireworks happen. Because mm-hmm. Terrence is not obligated to anybody. However, Ter- um, Turner is. Turner has dedicated himself as a member of the Leftovers. Mm-hmm. They have stated time and time again before the Swiss happened that they're going to be with each other no matter what. And you choosing a side, like, I get the fact that Terrence honestly should have thrown that. If I were Terrence, I would have thrown it. And I'm... I'm of course, people like don't throw ahead of house, but I would have thrown it so that I would have not had to be in that position because I truly feel if anyone on the other side had wanted, he could spin whatever type of story to get him off the block. Mm-hmm. But he did. And I understand that paranoia comes in place and you're like, well, I just make sure I'm safe and that's fine. I still don't think it was the right move for him to do. And then for him to do the move to pick a side, like, Terrence didn't really pick a side last week, and he's great right now. And he never was part of a side. Mm-hmm. But well, what you're doing, you're kind of cook, like you're just putting blood in your hands. Yep. You mm-hmm. know, you're just, you're just putting blood, like in any other type of word, you're putting blood in your hands when you make your decision, when you decide to take what you decide to take. It would have been better for nobody to know where you were at because I liked, I think I liked the more passive game he was playing beforehand because he was not touched and nobody was checking for him. And he could have stayed mm-hmm. in that position for a while until it mattered. And then he could have turned it on. Yep. Exactly. I said it on last week's podcast. What Turner should have done. First of all, he like like I said, he definitely should not have just won this HOH. I don't think he should have won it. Like that mm-hmm. was really not in his best interest. But I, I feel like really what he should have done was come in and say, hey, uh, I'm still left over strong. I don't know what the hell Kyle was over there doing. I don't know what Terrence, the, I don't know what they got going over there, but I'm left over strong. And that way, no matter what happened this week, he would have been in that great position. But now he can sit up there and show his ass with Kyle. <laughs> and he's sitting up there, a potential target moving forward. I mean, Turner was in a position to honestly win this game. And I do mm-hmm. feel like with these actions that he's done in protecting Kyle and what Kyle wanted to do, he has took some big hits to his game. And he's the HOH. It's crazy because he was sitting up here hating on Taylor of HOH, but he taking a few uh, pages out of her book. I was mm-hmm. kind of more like mob mannered, but I, I, I think that the, he is mob mannered, but he decided to take that risk in trusting in Kyle, which should not have happen mm-hmm. i agree so that, like whether people outside this recognize this or not maybe kyle in that house is very influential and for some reason people we don't see this outside but for some mm-hmm. reason people listen to what kyle has to say and they think he's a great person and they feel like they're they trust him and things because there's something to say about this bruh who like has had a say in a lot of hohs and had it not mm-hmm. been for like, what britney doing some things would have had a say in Turner's HOH too. And mm-hmm. could have had a say, like, you know, t- um, 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 t- 
Taylor was listening to him. Like, Monty would have listened to him before all this stuff. This is somebody who has had an influential place in the house for some reason. Mm-hmm. Really enough. And, like, you know, now that it's not benefiting some people's games, oh. yes, blowing up his, their game, if we're mm-hmm. going to be honest, you know? <laughs> exactly what it is. That's what's happening. But honestly, if we're t- putting how I feel about what they're doing aside, that bro was running the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and, and we, we said that Hi, too. He. Like, Kyle, Kyle, if he was not low key what he is, uh, we ain't gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kyle would be the best player this season. Kyle, yeah. I mean, he, I know, hold on, Dan Easley, bro. Okay. Like, he, he put himself in the best position, took there. himself out of it, and still ended up in a good position. Like, mm-hmm. he, his game is only being stopped because of what Michael is choosing to do now. If Michael did not do this move, Kyle would still be trudging ahead to the win. So, mm-hmm. I mean, Loki happy that's not happening. But, you know. Right. <laughs> but we, we stand, I fear. So well, Stand? No. Oh, we don't stand. <laughs> we don't stand <laughs> at all. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe I said that. Okay, but, uh. Oh my God! <laughs> Anyways, drink some water. <laughs> okay, uh. I can say that had not been for this, this person was marching his way through the game. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, Plus, his way through the game somehow. And there are some people. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say that, but like, there are people who I feel like I don't care. If People might take this another type of way, but Big Brother is a microcosm of the real world, and heterosexual white men mm. love this game usually. Hundred percent. Why we, for some reason, don't really put any respect on Michael's game, what by Vito's. If he were a heterosexual male, white male, they will be calling him the second coming of Christ. <laughs> mm-hmm. Literally. But we have our own biases and we won't let that happen. Even with him being a white person, but he is a gay male. And heterosexual white men, when they win a couple comps, when they can be, you know, as motivating or manipulative they can be, we we give them a Christ title and we just go ahead and let them do whatever within and outside the game. Inside and outside. There's no type of wherever Wom's about it. Like, I, I love the people that we call legends. I'm never gonna. I don't want to say their name because I don't. I still respect the fact that they're legends, but mm-hmm. I do think that they have a little bit of an easier skate in the game than somebody who looked like myself or somebody exactly. like mm-hmm. Andy or somebody that looked like somebody else. And mm-hmm. that's kind of how I view this as well, too. I mean, like Kyle. Mm-hmm. Like I think Kyle's playing a great game. I think Kyle, in a, in a sense of just game wise, I'm not saying what him. I, I have my own opinions and very hard opinions on his behavior. Mm-hmm. As a game itself, he was doing well. Um, but um, I think that, um, um, one, I think he's been given a lot of grace for what he's done, mm-hmm. before, which I don't know if that would have been if he looked differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but two, if he had not been racist, they would have been calling this through the second coming of Christ. 100%. 100%. And that shit, it pisses me off. It really does. I hate to say it because there (laughs) is such a clear, well, that's the thing. In my eyes, in our eyes, it's a clear um, advantage that they they have. It's it's an obvious privilege that these straight white men have. But a lot of the fans who aren't, you know, maybe people of color or not straight, it's harder for them to see that. So when um, we may comment, oh, well, Tyler did have some sort of a, you know, of an advantage because he is straight and white. Kyle may have this advantage because he's straight and white. When we say these things about these players, there's a lot of backlash because a lot of people don't see it. They don't understand, especially if they're not coming from a place of, you know, not privileged. And I feel like that gets annoying. It gets kind of just annoying and frustrating for me because um, it kind of shows that you don't see the disadvantage that we go through when we play the game, people who look like us. 
um, even gay people, like you said, even women. And it's like, if, if you don't see this advantage, then you barely see the disadvantage. Mm-hmm. If you don't see the disadvantage, then you're not really looking. And I feel like that's the issue. Like, it, it gets yeah. really frustrating with you're that. You're not going to get to understand those your issues. And even me, like, I can sit there and say, I definitely face colorism. I definitely face a lot of things. I don't care if you said one thing. I got I got a pretty face, though. That shit helps. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I know, that's right. Because there there is pretty privilege, too. Like, that's the thing. It doesn't exist. I don't know about definitely I does. some things, bro. I was <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, okay? <laughs> but I got a nice face and I be smiling and shit, and people would just be open like, in the room. I know. Right? Okay? Mm-hmm. I, I'm like, hey, I don't know. Well, if you look this way, would that happen? Who knows? You know? Right. But pretty right. privilege definitely exists. A right. lot of people exist, and like, we just need to be like, okay and cognizant of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And um, it definitely, it definitely comes down to, you know, it's like, especially in Big Brother, just how it is in life, like, a lot of people are shown grace, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that was the so, that was such a shocking thing with uh, Taylor in this season, because a lot of times when the Black woman is ostracized and, and, and bullied in Big Brother, they're never given that chance to then go on and play the game. Like, we've seen it with, like, a Kimmy, we've seen it with Dominique, you know, we've seen it with uh, Devon, and, like, they, they get into this corner, and they stay in that corner, and they can never mm-hmm. get out. And it was just so beautiful that Taylor was able to kind of get out of that, and then still be able to play some sort of game, because you know, it, it was it was really stressful at first, especially coming off of 23, you know, mm-hmm. seeing three strong <laughs> iconic black women play the mm-hmm. game and then uh, and then even even with some of the troubles that you guys went through it's like we thought it could have been a change and then to still see that there those real issues are still there and then we're able to be educated about things that were not being shown before so i just think yeah. this season is just it's a lot. It, it's a lot. lot. It's, it's a, a lot of angles in this season. It really mm-hmm. is a lot of learning. A lot of learning lessons that I hope people are taking from it. Spe- think, specifically, the producers. Yeah, I think. I think. They, I think both are. I think both are. I think. I know when I left the show, I was like, hmm, okay. There were some things that I felt. I was like, I didn't feel like they knew how to edit a quirky black woman. If that makes sense. I hundred percent agree. But I. I. I think I just was somebody that they didn't really like understand and they could, they were trying to figure out how to edit me. And as a result, Mm -hmm. I barely was there. If that made Mm -hmm. sense, unless they kind of had to put me. Um, But the other thing was um, I am so happy that colorism is at a national, like that it got brought to national stage because I had my own moments I had my own moments of production. I talked about it. And I don't think, even when I talked about it, I could sense the misunderstanding of things, you know? Mm. But with this blatantness and it being in front of people's faces and no one being able to do anything but have to address it, it was much easier for them to be able to edit that and show, like, Big Brother's really big amongst middle America, like, the, you know, mostly white, you know, middle America, like just not, no one like me and you, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And for them to be seen, like to it be in front of their faces and have to see it, mm-hmm. I'm so happy. And like, for me, I am just like, I don't care what happens in this season. The fact that that segment got shown, mm-hmm. very, I am good mm-hmm. for me, at least. Like, I'm just like, all right, like, Y'all know what this is, at least. Yeah. Something that's prevalent in our Black communities that even Black people don't want to acknowledge and address, but this got shown? Mm-hmm. That just, right. it, 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 it just, uh, it did so many things for me. That's all I can mm-hmm. say. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, what happened? Oh, Turner was initially thinking he might go with the leftovers, but he was convinced by Kyle to not do that. And Kyle convinced him to make sure he targets Michael because Michael needs to go because Michael's won all these competitions. And Turner eventually decided that that was what he needed to do and that he was going to nominate Brittany and Taylor and then backdoor Michael. So he 
goes along with the plan. He nominates Brittany and Taylor. Mind you, they think they are safe. He told yeah. them they were safe, so they were not expecting this. He literally um, promised everyone in the leftovers. He like, I'm leftover strong. I'm not going after strong. any of y'all. Mm-hmm. And then he went and told Alyssa and Terrence, I'm after party strong. I'm not going after any of y'all. <laughs> That's why I was like, it's so funny that he was dragging the fuck out of Taylor's HOH. Taylor's oh, she's promising everyone safety. And it's, and it's talking about, I want to use you as a pawn. You sat up there and did the exact same thing. Promised everyone safety. He asked if Alyssa and Terrence, can I use y'all as pawn? Well, he didn't ask mm-hmm. them. He was just going to do it without, without their accepting. Mm-hmm. At least he asked you and Monty. So it's just very funny The like, she sat up here and did almost everything that she did. Literally. And my thing is, and kind of something with um Aza said, you mentioned he had a, a loyalty to a crew. Like he had a, a, a an attachment. So what Terrence did versus what he did has to be taken differently. Because he was with the leftovers and now we're in jury, him sitting there and betraying the leftovers, nominating two of them, why would Britney want to vote you to win? Why would Taylor want to vote you to win? Like, you have to think about the jury votes. Joseph's already in jury going to be like, oh, you went with Kyle? It's a no, baby. Uh-uh. So, so when I hear people saying like, well, I think the move is to stake out Michael. Um, is it? When he's going to lose Michael, Brittany, Taylor, Joseph's jury votes, that's four and he needs five to win? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's wow. not. I, I, yeah. I, think, I think Turner is... Jury, like they're different games. Like you, you there's a pre-jury game, there's a jury mm-hmm. game, there's a six to three game, and right. then the after three, it's on your own. Mm-hmm. And he, mm-hmm. he ain't like you got to switch gears when it comes to jury. Definitely. Exactly. And the thing is, I think this just goes to show, like we've always thought like Turner to be this pretty, just like passive player, and I just feel like. He he, and there's nothing wrong with being a passive player, 100. percent But it's just that like there are certain times where you have to make actions in your game to move it forward. And I feel like, especially he had an HOH and in, in, in like this late in the game, and he's ruined his game even more. Like mm-hmm. he has not helped himself at all with this uh, HOH reign. So it's just I don't know. And, and he really showed that I think he's more focused on just like safety and what he feels is oh if this is what majority of the house is going with then i'll do it he's more you know? safe he's more with comfortability exactly because kyle wasn't the majority of the house but he was more comfortable with kyle so it, it went from the majority of the house because that what was what was comfortable yeah. but now it became oh my final two is with kyle i'm more comfortable with kyle so whatever yeah, kyle did he yeah. wanted to do and it's important to note that you know he didn't feel comfortable doing that until he had um, kind of Monty's approval in that as well. So, yeah, because he, he still he still had some connection with Monty because coming back into the house, Monty did sell out <laughs> Michael, Brittany, <laughs> and Brittany Taylor, Taylor because he knew with Turner as the HOH, he had to stay safe. So when he got Monty's approval, OK, Michael could be the back door. He felt, OK, well, that's enough people for me. Mm-hmm. I can just make this move. Exactly. I mean, now that you guys say that, though, like, I I guess what Turner did was he decided to pick a ship that we personally at this time don't think is the right decision. Mm-hmm. Um, I played a passive game myself, and I had to make the decision when I got HOH as to what I was going to do, and that's when I chose to take out Hannah and go with the guys because I felt that was best for my game. Now, I know a lot of people didn't mm-hmm. feel that was the right decision. Um, In my own head, I felt like it worked out to me in final three. I got the final three that I wanted. Mm-hmm. But, like, maybe I guess Turner in his head, he feels in his head that Kyle, Terrence, Monty, um, and Alyssa, Alyssa can do more for him as a group of five in mm-hmm. than the other half. And he's chosen his side. Yeah. Now, you looking out uh, and even me trying to be understanding everything, I don't think that's the best move. From trying to reason in Turner's head, I guess he felt that that's where he felt he could put his, all right, if I got these votes, I am good, and I'm like a shot at least up until final five. Mm-hmm. So um, he decides to nominate Brittany Taylor, Brittany Taylor are non. The veto picks happen. The whole goal is Michael can't get picked for veto, Michael can't get picked for veto, Michael can't get picked. And child, 
he get picked. got picked. But, now, but it's, it's top eight because what y'all thought? It's so nasty how he get picked too because apparently it came down. Brittany was the last pick and mm-hmm. Brittany chose Michael's chip. It wasn't even like a Ameri- uh, uh, house guest choice. Like she just chose him last. And it's like, what kind of sick twisted <laughs> fate is this? I love you. That's crazy. No, like Michael is like, he is like the luckiest. He is so lucky. Like this so man. Lucky. You know, it, I didn't get picked for a veto until like week, week five. <laughs> Damn. My, <laughs> in, my whole 12 weeks that I played in two or three veto competitions. Like, Damn. and most of them happen at final six. I barely mm-hmm. got to veto. So for my to be pick and then win, that's that's a lucky mother trucker, yo. But I will say, I mean, you don't have to play in many vetoes when you're not being nominated. I know, I know that. that. <laughs> you are <laughs> be nominated. <laughs> No, <laughs> luck is such a big factor in this game. Like seriously, like I, I stay thinking like if you're lucky, y'all really need to start including that in the strategy, social. Like luck is up there. Like luck is for real up there because luck, luck, luck is luck is luck is a thing. Luck is a mm-hmm. thing. And I don't think people should like discard it. I think it's like okay, that happened and acknowledge it, but just move on from it. Like okay, yeah, mm-hmm. like three just because of luck, but like okay, oh yeah, and this happened cool. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say at the time though, I was hoping that his chip was glued to the bottom of that box. I did not want <laughs> his chip to get full because at the time, yes. at this point. If Michael wins veto, Taylor is going home. Target. And you know what? I have been the A1 Taylor stand since day one, okay? And I was not ready to let go this week. Not not now. Because it would have just came out of nowhere. Like, I thought after the work she put in last week when the house was split, I really thought, you know, her path was set for, like, at least final three. And I got scared this week because I was like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. It was getting scary. So Michael's playing. So y'all know who won. Like, um, <laughs> what else is that to say? And then apparently it was slip inside, which is like, so the tiny veto was an HOA, slip inside is a veto now. Like, they just switched everything up. Like, which is the veto was slip inside? We didn't even get a slip inside. We was waiting for that. I was waiting for the slip inside. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know why they didn't give y'all slip inside. I know, so right? Random. I was just thinking that. I so, mean, you know, we was. <laughs> so, Michael wins the veto. And at this point, of course, he's going to use the veto on Britney. However, um, when Michael realized that he was the target after Britney and Taylor were on the block and everybody was ignoring him with with Woo, he has been um, talking to the cameras, talking to the people, saying that it's F. Kyle and it's F. Turner, and they will be gone. Yeah. So y'all know Michael. Michael loves a good moment. Okay. He does love a moment. Even before veto, Michael went up in that back room. He said, you know what? He like, he'll, he'll give a little whisper, yo. You know what? Kyle and Turner, I'm going to win the veto, and I'm going to win HOH, and I'm putting Kyle and Turner on the block, and you're going to regret mm-hmm. the day you... I was like, okay, <laughs> Michael! Like, I don't know. It, like, it's, that's iconic. It's, it's the fact that he says that and then wins the veto. It's like Literally. iconic, because you know they're going to show that on the show. Literally. Like, he ate, and he did that earlier, too. Week one, he was like, what would Janelle do? I'm going to win the veto. It's like, that's, that's iconic. <laughs> so that was our two minutes of Michael praise. Because <laughs> it will be getting no more. <laughs> so, um, after he wins the veto, him and Brittany have a conversation. Whew. Child. <sighs> and child. This is when it gets crazy. So, <laughs> the conversation and the concept is, you remember back when Kyle was whispering them sweet, them sweet nothings in them our ears? sweet ear. racist nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. It's definitely time to, you know, let those out. Let those nothings out. And this is, this is, this is a lot. So, I'm going to finish the story and then we can talk because this is a, a heavy topic. So Michael and Brittany have been bombarded by Kyle throughout the season about starting a white alliance. And the white alliance was going to go after everybody who is POC, period, point blank. Um, they have been aware of this since week four. Michael's first HOH. It is week eight. So within <laughs> those <laughs> within those four weeks. <laughs> 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 That's sick. 
<laughs> no. So within those four weeks, um, they have been quiet as church mouses. Right. Uh, they were nowhere to be found. You couldn't find Michael and Brittany nowhere. When they was up having leftover meetings, Michael and Brittany were gone. When they were like, it, they have not been found. But now they're everywhere. Like we found them now. So I guess they decided that because Michael was the target and Brittany was not, now was, oops, now we remember, oh, wait, isn't it a great time to start telling this information? So they- They remembered Michael, that right. racial bias was wrong. If Michael and Brittany have, in their mind, in their mind, they now have the chance, this is their first chance to tell the stories of racism from Kai. In reality, this was not their first chance. Um, so, <clears throat> so they're going to tell the house about his racial biases, woot the woot woot. So they go around in a motherfucking, it's a fucking tour, like they're in the Hunger Games, girl. <laughs> so they go to the blacks first. So they talk to blacks. <laughs> <laughs> so they talk to no okay. So they talk to Taylor and Monty. I'm gonna be serious. I'm gonna be serious, y'all. So they talk to Taylor and Monty. <laughs> they talk to Taylor and Monty first, and they let Taylor and Monty know that Kyle is racist. And Taylor and Monty, and we don't course, see any of that conversation. We don't see that conversation because, because black people are involved. So CBS did not want to show that conversation. So Taylor and Monty. <laughs> Okay, I'm joking. Let me stop. Also, the, she can't be associated with this crazy stuff. All right, so in all seriousness, we didn't see the conversation. However, Michael and Brittany did lay out the entirety of that situation to Taylor and Monty. Taylor and Monty did not seem happy. Um, Michael and Brittany then talked to Alyssa. They laid it out fully to Alyssa. Alyssa was, whew, she didn't know what to do. They then She was so flustered. She was flustered. They then laid it out to Turner. And Turner, he has a chill demeanor, but afterwards he's basically like, I want to be uh, pro-white now, so I don't know what's going on over there. Um, and that is the the tour that they go on. Kyle finds out. It gets out around the house. And we can pause here. Because yeah. still some more. I think, I think, I'm, like, I'm just going to straight out, flat out say it. Like, it's a debate on whether it was using racism for strategy or not. It's exactly what it was. I, f- I personally feel like he only utilized this when he felt like he was now in danger. This was not important to him until, well, I won't say it was not important to him, but it didn't need to be said for him until he was in danger. Now, I understand this is Big Brother and it is a game, and I do understand me, you can separate the two. As a personal, as a Black man, I am offended that he only waited till he was in danger to to say something. And I feel like I tweeted this, like, that's the perfect microcosm of America. Like, he as a ally, a a white male, he still has that privilege of being included in these race uh, uh, conversations with Kyle. He was actively doing strategy to try and make this split happen. Oh, yes, let's remember. He wanted this alliance with Kyle, Turner, Alyssa. When Kyle told him that Turner was not down, he was very upset because he wanted this split to happen, whether it was for game or whether it was for the basis that Kyle wanted it on. He wanted this split to happen, and he knew the justification behind it. So he definitely was okay with this until it no longer benefited him. So it's very clear that he felt like now's the time. I mean, even in the way he did it, like he was like, oh, I have information on you, Kyle. You would not want to go against me. It mm-hmm. makes me think, okay, if Kyle came back in the house and he was like, well, Michael, Brittany, y'all still my A1 day ones. I'm rocking with y'all. Let's work with them. Would you have told this information? If it was the same situation and Kyle did not flip and Turner had HOH, yeah, I agree with would that. you have shared this? And that upsets me. Yeah. I agree with that. I don't know if I'm upset. And the only reason I'm not, I don't know. I'm not upset because I'm in their shoes, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I, who knows how I would have felt if I'm in that house. Um, but I agree. You're speaking right in money, Lee, like in every single thing that you've say, stated and you've said. Um, a lot of people putting blame on one person. But when these type of things happen, the important thing is to nip it in the bud once it happens. So as soon as that came out of somebody's mouth, if he felt uncomfortable, then you say that. And I bet mm-hmm. you vocalizing that, and at least a Brittany saying like, I agree, that would have nipped that in the bud. But you kept quiet, which meant that she, 
that's not important to you. And I'm, I've got to say this, that's okay if it's not. But don't be performative about it. Ooh, there it is. There it is. If it ain't important to you, guess what? That's okay. That's fine. You do not need to be cognizant, aware, an ally with black issues or black problems or anything. But where I'm going to feel some type of way is if you slide it in when it makes you put you in a better position. Right. And that's where I'm like, uh, about where I'm like, okay, so is this, uh, like, I, I do feel that it was more of a ploy to like put them in a better position. And I would, it, as one who has been in the house and things were said that I did not agree with and didn't like, but I kept quiet and moved on. But what I didn't do was I didn't use that to my advantage and say, well, this person said this, this is a horrible thing. What do you feel about that? I never did that. Mm -hmm. And I don't agree with anybody using that. Like, like if you don't like something and you're not going to say nothing about it, then move on with your life. Don't keep it back and then use it when you feel like you need to, when you're back up in a corner. I don't like that. Yep. Exactly. It was that like was... it was like it was like 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 he was pressing what is it, the nuclear weapon button in the right. White House. Like this is the ultimate move. You want to mm -hmm. f with me? I'm gonna expose it all. It was just like exactly. I'm happy it's happening because bye bye Kyle. But it's like it did yeah. not need to go about the way it did. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like you I said, the, the way he was. Yeah. If you felt some type way about it, said earlier, like if you right. if you go go out go out like a mother tricking champion. Play for that veto, win that veto, mm -hmm. but don't use that to like. It's messy and it's weird, and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, weird as hell. Because the way he was speaking about it to the cameras, he was like, "Yeah, no." When he sp when he spoke to Kyle, he's basically like, "Kyle, I got some shit on you. So you really finna do this to me? I got some shit on you." And this was the shit. And it's like this was the shit that you had on him to flip on his game. Like this isn't game shit. Like this is real shit. So I, I I just oh that was nasty. That's that was the thing. Real nasty. They always want to talk about like for example, especially like some of the casuals, like oh Taylor not wanting to put up Jasmine because being a black woman, that's using race as the game. This is bringing race into the game. He's usually using literally racism using racism to get someone out, and that's the thing. I think people need to realize and this. What really upsets me with some fans about Big Brother because. This is a social experiment. It's a game, but these are still people. These are not chess pieces. These are real people, real emotions. Racism is real. Prejudice, you know, biases, colors. These are all things that's real. And those things mm -hmm. will come into play into the game. It's just going to happen. It sucks because these are things that were so encouraged back in the day. Y'all remember in BB Can 8, they literally casted a homophobe and Kale and, and two gay men because they wanted to see the experiments of mm -hmm. a homophobe with two gay... You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. These are the things they wanted to encourage, and now they're not showing it. But it, it upsets me when fans are like, why are you... It's all about race and this is the dog. Like, this isn't the game. But it's like, this is what happens in the real world. Like, right. this should be put on television. Yeah. When Jasmine Sapper said, I don't see color, when people say I don't see color, I said, damn, that must be nice. <laughs> right. You no, must, literally. You must be living, you must be, they say I ignorance is bliss. Treated. I, that's must be real nice to not see color. Mm -hmm. Ooh, right, I literally. But, it's just, that never happened to me, sports and tech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> must be nice. Cool. <laughs> it, it, it's just and like the thing is like it, like I'm like let's think it really really comes down to is that white people white fans of the show they get uncomfortable seeing this I don't give a fuck about the comfortability at all like this is something that mm. I've been wanting to see in Big Brother and I'm happy that we are getting to see it I'm happy that like I said it sucks the way it's happening but I'm happy that a white male is getting the consequences of being racist and that consequence of him getting evicted. I'm happy about that. And I was talking to uh, Farrah about this earlier. It's really interesting because it's like, like basically what happened, he got canceled in Big Brother. They, they exposed <laughs> his old tweet tweets from, from two or three weeks ago. And now he's getting canceled and he's getting evicted. And it's like, mm -hmm. for me, I mean, like, I mean, he's getting what he deserves, but it's it, what, what will always make me feel weird is the way it came about. Yeah, I mind the toxicity, and I do mind like when Twitter gets on their high horse and gets very mean and just ridiculous about people. But on the mm. other hand, I don't mind it. I don't mind it because of this. Like, I feel as black people, we hold white people just as much accountable as we do black people. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now we're in a place in Big Brother where it used to be one or two black people in the house. No, nope, now yeah. it's six. And guess what's happening? We're seeing stuff that happens in our community on a yep. mm-hmm. like colorism mm-hmm. in the house twice in a row. People didn't see it mm-hmm. last year, but it existed. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing it now this year, and we're holding them accountable. We do hold people accountable. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know people in my own alliance have stated like the DMs that they've gotten and the attacks that they've gotten from people. Mm-hmm. We're holding black people accountable just as much role in white people. And I'm like, as long as y'all keep that same energy, I am good. Like, mm-hmm. right. fine. keep saying energy with any single thing you see happen between any individual, just because you don't like somebody or you're not, you don't want that person to win does not mean you do not need to hold them people accountable if they're being subject to something. And that's what I'm hoping for of that. Because at least from what I've seen is I've seen at least social media hold both black and white people the same standard when things do happen. So I'm mm-hmm. happy with that and I just want to keep on going, you know, and, um, but don't be crazy about it that like the person is questioning their own life. Like, yeah. Right. Of course. Definitely. Like definitely not. Definitely not that intense because there's some people y'all y'all, <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all be crazy. Y'all be y'all be contacting the cousins, the families, the uncles, Literally. the aunts. Little okay. people, aunties alone. <laughs> they don't got nothing to do with it. But that's the thing. It's like being a black fan of the game. Like I can sit here and say, like this move that Michael did on a game level is iconic. Like he ate this up, but. Mm-hmm. As a black male, on a personal level, I can still say it was fucked up how he went about doing it. Like, like I, I don't have to be happy about that, and I can express that. And I hate people in the comments like, it's a game. Why would he give this information? Why would he go spill this? Whoop, whoop, whoop. I don't give a fuck about that. It's a great game move. Hello, yay. But I can still be offended. I hate that. I hate like trying to police how I feel about the situation. Like, I can feel this way because it affects people who are like me it affects my culture i feel so yeah. right yeah exactly yeah and i i agree with you completely yeah. mm-hmm. so after this kyle finds out that the girls know he racist and he essentially <laughs> he essentially starts <laughs> he essentially starts um panicking yeah so he goes to die room starts on the guilt <laughs> literally so he goes to the diary room mind y'all all he knows is that Alyssa might have been told that he might have wanted an alliance with her and Turner or something but like, you know like he that's knows how you the know. smallest inkling and he but, was like they know I'm racist he oh know my God. He, still the team. he know he was open enough like freaking what am I gonna say freaking mm-hmm. now, okay I'm a Sunday just that's a guilty. <laughs> that's a guilty. That's that's what it right came down because he's like he knew he messed up because basically what happened was Monty was in a conversation with Terrence and he was about to tell him the full capacity of it because Michael and Brittany did not tell Terrence, which Terrence is upset about, by the way. Uh, but Terrence, he didn't he didn't hear Monty clearly. So when Monty left and Kyle came in the room, he asked Kyle. He was like, "Did you hear something about Michael and Brittany?" Uh, form of the anti-black alliance. That's because that's what he heard at first. And Kyle was like, "What?" So Kyle walked out of the room. That's when he started getting panicky. And then he went woke Alyssa up after she told him, "I just want to lay that out." And he's like, "So like, he he was prying her for information. He's like, you know, so like, kind of what were they discussing?" And she was like, "They kind of mentioned, you know, you maybe grouping Joseph Taylor Monty, and he knew exactly." Exactly what she was talking about after mm-hmm. that, because uh, he's like, so he's trying to say I'm, 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 I'm making alliances based off race. Like, is that what they're saying? She's like, well, they're not saying that. He's like, are they trying to say I'm racist? Like, I will leave mm-hmm. the game. So he runs out of the room. He goes upstairs. He tries to go to the diary room. He goes downstairs trying to go to the diary room, and then they finally let him in. And he stayed in there for like 15 hours, damn near. He was not coming out. Panicking, shook, scared, sweating. Oh, I, I. I y'all gonna hate me. I feel bad that I feel bad for the crowd, but I do. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why I, I, I'm just the person why I have to show bad for everybody. So please, like, amongst their horrible, de- yo, I love the way Pharaoh look at me right now. No, I'm, <laughs> no, no, I'm listening. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just listening. I'm gonna wait for you to finish. I'm gonna wait for you to finish. Um, I feel bad. I don't know what it is in me that has me feeling bad for people, even when maybe they might not deserve it, but I I do feel bad because I know what it's like. Ugh. Like, 
the well, okay, this is gonna sound weird, but like for three weeks, I've not get BB bucks from America. Mm-hmm. I only got fifty dollars, the lowest, and I was mm-hmm. with uh, Kylan and SB. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, America fucking hates me, y'all. Mm-hmm. And like, I remember feeling like shit because I was like in my head just processing what do I do, what I do wrong, and mm-hmm. I knew Kylan is. I said Kylan. <laughs> is like oh my god like just like once you know you've done wrong or you think you've done wrong mm-hmm. you start thinking about everything oh my gosh what is my mom going through he don't even know that he's known as KK <laughs> yeah it's bad for him that's that's just what I'm talking about yo, F, yo come on bro oh god you want to be KK Kyle Oh my uh, God! <laughs> How would he have known that this little move he did, and I said little move in the sense of this is a move in 24 hours in that day that turned into this, and mm-hmm. he knows now. That's why that dude is about to self evict. He's like, oh, <laughs> he got it. He's trying to skedaddle. So this- I can't <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. I feel bad. Mm-hmm. I feel freaking bad. I do. I do. I do. And he don't got. He. I mean, he's okay. I'm, okay, he's not my type, so I wouldn't know. Maybe he has pretty privilege. I don't know. He don't got pretty privilege for me. I mean, yeah, he but, I mean, girl, he got white man privilege. <laughs> <laughs> he got white man privilege. Yeah, he ain't my type. But like, I like. I can't help myself. I. I. I, mm-hmm. I, I feel horrible saying that. But I do, because I don't think he understood the ramifications of what he said. Mm-hmm. The funny thing is, if he had said this 10 to 12 years ago. It would have been no ramifications. <laughs> it would have been so good. So great, even. Would have won again. He definitely, uh, definitely, actually. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have sat, not saying we have, not us. You know, people have sat there and awarded fan favorites. For doing deplorable behavior to people. Why has Jeff won twice? Oh, I, I, and I said it and I meant it. I, I, but we we move. So um, I understand you feeling bad though because as a human, it's just something in well, like in me. Not every human, because some girls don't give a fuck. But uh, I want it. I'm sorry. I to say it. <laughs> but, even, but even in me, like. Like, cause that's the thing. I admit it all the time on the podcast. I'm a mean person. When people was like, hey, "Be nice," I just be like, "No, I'm mean." Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not actually a mean person. I don't be thinking. Okay, but anyways, you know, I'm not the, the. I'm not the most gentle. I'm not the most gentle. I'm gonna tell it like it is. Like I'm gonna be like, "How you're not shit." But um, <laughs> even in situations like this, I can understand. Like I, I see, like, hey, like that kind of sucks. But it would never get to the point that it got with Terrence. So let's get into that. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll be real, we'll be we'll be correct about that. So, yeah, keep going. I'm with you. So um after Kyle found out about himself, it was a house meeting. We didn't get to see it, so there's barely some details like Yeah, so just a, 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 a like the last few days after this has been exposed and during CBS Big Brother Lafay, whoever doing that back there. They are they are not showing any conversation specifically where I feel like the black players, Monty Taylor, are speaking about it together mm-hmm. or their experience about it. it, mm-hmm. it they, they're showing conversations where, like, for example, they showed them explaining it to Alyssa in full. They showed them um, explaining the Turner kind of in full. But when they're speaking to Taylor and Monty, those conversations have been getting cut. So we have been seeing almost none of anything. But there was a full house meeting where apparently Kyle exposed he was in a final two with Her- Turner. Ter- Turner, shit, too many T's. He was in a final two with Turner. He, uh, the after party was exposed, which is the four person outside alliance. And then obviously the leftovers has already been exposed. So basically, yeah. Kyle his had whole a, game. His Kyle whole had game. A, had a, you know. Kyle basically blew up his whole game, which mm-hmm. I, that's the thing, like, I don't like stop. I right. Hate, like I hate when people blow up their game and try to like ruin other people's games. Mm-hmm. So I go out like a freaking fighting stallion. Stop mm-hmm. that. Like let mm-hmm. other people have their game. Like I hate that. 
Mm-hmm. Mind you, this is like well, that's the thing. I don't we, we don't really know even the timelines. Like he could came know. out of the mm-hmm. DR and it started immediately. We have mm-hmm. conversations today that are saying that maybe there was another issue in the have not room before this. It's mm-hmm. like because they don't show Brittany. anything, and we who knows how they're gonna edit it when the episodes come, child. Because we definitely not gonna see everything. I still don't like it. Like I feel like the only time that it happened, I saw that with Frenchie, and I saw that. I don't know. No, no, I didn't really see that with Claire. Claire was just like, "Don't let X win," pretty much. But he, she wasn't blowing mm-hmm. up. So Frenchie, he blew up his whole game. I don't like yeah. you putting like. I don't know. I I like the game to figure itself out. I, I, you and exactly saying, "Hey, I'm gonna tell you how this all happens," and mm-hmm. you know, this I was with this and this. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. Yeah. And and that's really the reason Turner is like, well, well, at the moment was like he really has to go because that man just blew up my game and for what like that yeah. literally had nothing to do with me Turn i didn't even ex- i didn't expose you and i'm not black so what's my issue? <laughs> i don't like that I, ooh, which is like where i'm like i'm like they should have gotten rid of kyle early they should have known how mm-hmm. he was well, he done Kyle, flipped on every alliance. Well, he would have never known though. He, I feel like the only time he would have known was when when Kyle blew up his. Kyle basically blew up his game with Terrence. He did, mm-hmm. and he didn't even conceptualize that. Quiet. In my opinion, Terrence did a smart thing. He didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. He went ahead and did things accordingly, but he kept it quiet. And then it came out on its own. Mm-hmm. But then he does it to this, like. It, however, if Terrence had not, what would have helped the people who we want to get ahead, which is a Taylor, which is a Joseph, which is a Monty, would mm-hmm. have been if Taylor had gone to everyone else in the house and then figured out that, hey, you know what? Mm, it's best for me to still get rid of Kyle anyway and then got rid of Kyle. Mm-hmm. Kyle getting rid of on an HOH would have been more beneficial. But Exactly. He saved himself, and then he got in this one, and now he's just freaking ruined that. And guess what? He still has a freaking fighting chance, which is crazy. Because everybody named Mama want to keep him safe for so, some reason. So <laughs> after the house meeting, he became the house target. It was an agreement with literally everyone that he would be going home. And at first, it was kind of like, a, he's over there, we're over here. And then he started getting more intermingling and having conversations with people. And this is when Terrence ass decides that he feels like it might be beneficial for Kyle's learning journey as if this man is in elementary school to <laughs> keep him in the game and this is my thing this is my thing this is my thing this is my thing it's hard to isolate this situation with Terrence and just look at it as this one situation because Terrence has just been building and building and building and building on getting on my shit list He's been on my shit list since day one. And now he's like dead ass on my shit list forever for life today because this man is literally crazy. I can't believe this man. Like that's, yeah. oh, that's, that, that's, that's oh. I got all the empathy in the world. I just like something, I, I, I don't know, like. Empathy for Terrence, okay? <laughs> I just, I don't, I, I, I don't get it. I, <laughs> I'm trying. Like when I tell you, like I have a lot of empathy, and there's two people who I'm working on. It's Monty to an extent, and it's Terrence. Yo. Me too. Me too. Terrence said against Taylor, and it's like I feel like he said that to me. I can't help it, and I just I'm working on it. But like for you to have this grace that you're able to extend, Kyle, grace. Not extend that grace to my girl, yo. But that's the thing that that's what really pisses me off. Who's a black woman and you're black? Literally. But that's the, the what really pisses me off is that now he wants to be this great teacher to teach Kyle how racism is bad when he has been sitting up here. Trashing a black woman the entire time. Colin Taylor a beer. Kyle, are you going to teach? Work on your feminism. Work on your colorism. They they won't. These people have no idea what. Like Monty had some type of like whatever in the house. Terrence ain't gonna have no idea until he gets out of the house. And I bet you guys, I'm sorry, they still won't get it. <laughs> they will, all they will, all they will ever gonna be able to see is the fact that they hurt somebody. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I hurt you. And I'm so sorry I hurt you. But mm-hmm. they still won't be able to really like, they're gonna have any reason in their head to explain away a lot of their behavior. 
from being in the house. Well, this happened. Well, you were here and you weren't really rocking with me anyway. And this and that, mm-hmm. like, mm. Showing this man grace after this for what? Like, w- why though? Why though? I mean, the after argument just the- doesn't even make any sense because you're saying like, oh, you want to keep him to, to, to show him a lesson, but it's just like, well, F Taylor, F Taylor's game, huh? She just goes home. Literally, yes. I, I just, uh, for me, it's just, uh, for me, like, I'm all about being real, Terrence. Look at the cameras and tell them your real shit. Keeping Kyle right here is best for my fucking game. That's what I'm saying. Say that. Say that. Don't sit there and say that. I will respect you so much more. Just tell, yo, tell Monty, yo, I understand what it is. She's best for my game. Do you not see what, like, keeping Turner is best for my game. Do you not see why Turner is best for your game, too? Let's just get rid of Taylor. Don't mm-hmm. do, like, I hate when people sugarcoat it and try to cover with something else. I hate mm-hmm. that. Be about your ish, okay? Literally. Right. Say but it. Wait. Uh, but it's just because that's what he tries to preach. Like, he's just so real. And he pisses me off because he sat in Taylor's face and he tried to throw in her face. Like, I just don't understand why you ever questioned me. You know, Black people, we never come together with these things and talk yeah. about it. Like, why would you believe Joseph over me? But you were trying to flip the vote, which is what Joseph told her. And now you're trying to flip the vote on her again. You weirdo. Like, what is wrong white with this man? It confirms racist. A lot of people playing the game, they don't it's really funny too to watch though, but like they will always like, they will never, it'll be like, oh my gosh, how could you like blindside me? But they have no problem blindsiding people. Like, oh my gosh, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Why would you do that to me? But they mm-hmm. will sit there and do that to other person and feel completely right about it too. Yeah, literally. That's, that, that's what Turner sit up here doing. Like, oh, I can't believe she wants to offer me the pun. Like, it, it's just like, yeah. you're doing the yeah. exact same thing other people are doing. In different places, they do. Mm-hmm. I do want to ask Aza, like, is amnesia, like, I, I feel like people get amnesia very quickly in Big Brother. Like, because, like, yeah. I'll be like, people, do you not remember you said this a few weeks ago? Like, is it that easy to forget a conversation a yeah. month ago? Yeah. I mean, I saw it up in front of my face, bro. <laughs> 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 like, I just be so confused. Alan said, yeah, yeah, I'm a to say to H. That's me, the target. That girl <laughs> picked me four times. It's girl, you know, girl, you know he got on this podcast and he said, let me show up. I want to hear it. What do you say? Girl, because I asked about that week because I wasn't even going to play with him. I, I even told him straight to his face. I was like, um, he was like, no, I did try to throw that. And I said, Kylan, be for real. Be, I, I said, B-F-F-R. You tried to throw that? And he said, no, I did. You didn't think I tried to throw that? And I said, Kylan, I'm going to be honest. I didn't. Think I tried to throw that. He said he tried to throw it. I said, if you try to throw it, why are you in final two? Why is you? you like, if he, I mean, look, there are a lot of things. I, I, people get mad at me because. I say again and again, I got no regrets. Like, the fuck, why don't you have no regrets? I'm like, nigga, I wasn't making <laughs> no decisions. Right. I, most of the time, I was reacting to shit. And my reaction was on point, okay? <laughs> I don't got no regrets. Bruh, that week to which I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, that was the beginning of X not trusting Kai. Mm-hmm. Because we were. That's in- true, because he didn't like that either. We were, yeah, we, it was me, him, and Kai that I said, yo, y'all throw it to me. And X was like, cool, I'm going to throw it to the next person I see, which was Tiffany. Mm-hmm. But Kai didn't follow the assignment because it would have been me and Tiffany at the end. Mm-hmm. Mm. Kai, it was, it was Tiffany and Kai at the end. He saw that whole doom. And then he saw Kai tell, say that you, I never said that. And me thinking I was insane, X saw that shit. He was like, mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> That was the beginning, bro. That was it. Mm-hmm. No, amnesia happens. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Even I, I love me, and I'm gonna go on both ends to make sure I'm not like whatever. On the other hand, with Tiffany's HOH, I love the fact that she got back to back HOH. I love the fact she made history as a black woman. Mm-hmm. But she did also go to Xavier and tell Xavier one thing we cannot do is win this next HOH. Mm-hmm. You better not win it. Mm-hmm. You better throw it. Mm-hmm. But who was left on there was me, Kai, and Tiffany. Right. I held on until I could not hold on no more. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I, like, I, re- I remember I watching why like, why are they why up are they there? Fall, 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 all right. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say I made mistakes? Oh, you made mistakes. No, I didn't. I was one of them to cook it, and I cooked my way to final three. All right, okay. Oh, yeah. I but you, I but you know, my fucking business. Okay. You know what I love, Aza? Your first H O H was earned one thousand percent. Wasn't nobody throwing that, and I love that because it, it, instead of it being those first two. You got the one you deserve. You made that move, girl. Like, I don't know. I made the move. I felt necessary. I know we won't like it, but... Girl, girl stop. No. They stop have apologize. to get over that. They have to right? get over that. No, dead ass. Stop apologizing for that move. You really don't need to apologize for that move. You got Hannah out. She got out. <laughs> and you made it to final three. Like, I don't know. Shout out to Hannah, girl. We love somebody, y'all. I mean, somebody had to go. It is what it is. Period. Honestly, I don't, I don't think it was that bad. When I went back and thought about your game plan, I was like, it really wasn't bad. Well, to me, to me, it never made sense why people were mad because I'm like, well, strategically, her closest closer allies at that moment were X and Z. Her literal closest allies, like the entire like, game, not even just in that moment, but the entire game was X I, and, I was, and Big D. And then if if Aza is if Aza's thinking, why am I for you? <laughs> why am I speaking for you? But I, I'm gonna just say it real quick. I was just probably like, I, I'm going to have to go with Big D to the end to win anyways. So if I'm going to go to the final three, <laughs> it's going to be with Big D regardless. And I got to win the final HOA <laughs> and take Big D regardless. So what's the <laughs> fucking issue? So I don't know. They wasn't thinking. This is all I have been saying. I'm like, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to go like this because like three, four, the Twitter doesn't fucking get it. Girl. Like, oh, well, you was going to take X anyway. Yeah, when I got respect, I'm fucking petty. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my plan that I told y'all on the cameras for weeks. Y'all didn't believe that shit. Y'all were so certain I'd be out. When I took Hannah out, y'all were very certain I'd be following. And then when it oh, came, and we- suddenly everyone came on board and was like, oh, yeah. Oh, it switched real quick. Right. Anyway. No shit, dummy. to save the races, but it's just not gonna happen because he is just what he is. Even Alyssa, uh, Turner was talking to Alyssa. Alyssa was like, babe, he's going home. Like, yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Alyssa, like, and, Kyle, Alyssa and Kyle, Alyssa all the way broke up. Sometimes I'm like, and the thing is, I'm like, I ain't be trying to defend Terrence. It's just mm-hmm. that the crazy people on Twitter got me randomly wanting to defend Terrence. Like, cause when Terrence did that shit, I said, this ain't a bad, but like, you're stupid. I'm like, y'all quiet, like this ain't bad, but I'm realizing. <laughs> Terrence ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, so like he be falling into these moves kind of more. Than- <laughs> I'm like, okay, I was I was working with you last week when I said this was logical, but, but bro, what you doing hitting up Kyle when that shit? Don't That's what I said, Ava. You can't be defending them because they're gonna make you look stupid all the time. They're gonna make you look, oh, it's gonna be bad the next day. Oh, child. So hey. That's the end of the week. We finna get into these ratings real quick and rate the players real quick, and then we are gonna wrap it up. Boom. But, all right. Boom. As you see, last week is on top. We had our guest last week on top. That was what our ratings was looking like. This is this week. We only have to rate, what, eight players? So that's cute. Oh, we got to rate Jasmine Joseph ugly ass. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so real quick, what would you rate Jasmine as an overall player? So overall, if she gets plays Big Brother again, but one to ten, what do you think, Aza? Ladies first. Let's start. I'd give her. Oh wait, 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 wait! We got a preference, baby. These ratings, <laughs> we be, we be, we be real on the ratings. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, okay, okay. Mine still might be a little bit. More on the higher side. Okay. 
but I think I'd give her a six. Now, give me a second. Let me put my. <laughs> oh, 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 you don't agree with the six? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, so a five is let me give you an example of let me try to give you a, a general if I don't want to give her a six, she can give her a six. Well okay, give me give me the give me the rating. Um, but I'm gonna go grab my grab the core. You can hear me though? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh so I just feel like a uh, oh a five is average. <laughs> <laughs> And one is bad and 10 is is great, you know? Like average would be someone who who could win who could maybe maybe win a comp or two and could maybe have a strategic conversation or two, could maybe get an alliance, but after that, then what? But uh hey, other than that, I'm gonna let you rate how you wanna rate. I know that's right. I feel like for me, like I'm Oh, Basically, what you're saying is five is average, one is abysmal. And, t- and 10 is great, wonderful. I don't want to use example players because I actually don't like it when other people do that. So uh, 10, I don't think there is a 10 in my opinion. I don't think there's a 10 too. Okay, so if that's the case, then I need to adjust. Okay. <laughs> yes, now, because okay. six, six is looking a little bit generous, Oswald. <laughs> okay, now, uh, Lee, would you let's start? How about Lee? You start with Jasmine, and then she can get an ID. I feel like Jasmine, as an overall player, I would settle at a four just because Jasmine, in this season at least, she never really got her full footing. You know, when she started off part of the girls, girls alliance, like she was not really someone they were seeing to bring. Even towards the end, she was just their plus one, their pawn in their quotations cookout type strategy. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's a big issue for her game. Also, a lot of people just did not like Jasmine. At mm-hmm. first, it started out people just on the outside not liking her. And then people on the inside started to realize she was not that great of a person either. Like, literally, like, you know, most of the reason why she was taken out was because people were just at that point getting so annoyed with her because, you know, she had the injury. Um, she wasn't considered a comp beast. And, you know, it wasn't really, I feel like it was like she didn't need to go. Like, but yeah, I will say also the reason why she ended up going was because of the situation of the uh house twist. But I feel like mm-hmm. even if that wasn't the twist, Michael wins HOH and she goes either way. I just feel like Jasmine, I don't know. I don't like I feel like game-wise, we didn't get to see much of it because when she wasn't talking mess about Taylor, she was complaining about other things. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it wasn't much of the game, I fear. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Jasmine a five and this is why. Okay. I give her a five because I would love to see this game with no twists. Like mm. no type of thing to get in the way. And if I've gotta be honest, before the bestie twists, I feel like Jasmine was in a good position. She won H O H during that time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like she tried to make things to set herself up in a good way. Mm-hmm. I think without the bestie twist, the girls likely, unfortunately, would have had a better hold in the house. Mm-hmm. Would have been able to kind of like, unfortunately, probably get Taylor out. Unfortunately, kind of hold, just have a good hold on some things. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that the bestie twist kind of um, stopped that from happening. And I yeah. think Jasmine kind of got in that. And at the end of the day, even though she did, she's one of the last people that got taken out. And she did not have a bruh to cover her during mm-hmm. that time. So I kind of got to give her a five, I feel, because I think, and this is game gameplay aside, unfortunately, she benefited off of colorism with the change. Mm-hmm. She benefited off of some other things, the microaggressions and bullying she did. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will give her a five in every single person when leaving the house spoke pre jury spoke such high remarks about Jasmine. Mm-hmm. Like, we all talk about how much of a great person she was, which is something that stuck in my head because I'm like, she's disappointed me in many things in her, in the way that she thinks that she said, but I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. she seems to have a presence among so many people that have left the house, which means that she probably had a very good social game. And that's usually not something that we can really see. Exactly. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because I've been <laughs> preaching it. I've been preaching it to my throat her on this podcast that you cannot really see social game. Like you really you can't cannot see social see game. That. Yeah. I, I don't I, I I have I I would say I think I have a great social game. But you do you did. 
Well, thank you. But people mm-hmm. can't, you can't really see, there's something you can't really see mm-hmm. about like having a magnetism to people who like you. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, X, I've, in my in a cookout, X has that, Tiffany has that. And I think, mm-hmm. I, and Big D has that to an extent too. Mm-hmm. A magnetism of people who just draw to you and you can mm-hmm. use that mm-hmm. in different ways if you feel like it or not. But yeah. Yes. Um, for Jasmine, I actually agree a lot with both of y'all. Um, the thing, I want to give Jasmine a five. I want to. However, <laughs> um, I feel like I can't because of her um, likability. And I feel like there's a difference between likability and social game. Lee, what you mentioned was her likability and how people just genuinely did not like her, um, especially in the jury. I feel like when it came to her social game, similar to what Aza said, Socially, you always saw, and and I remember talking about this on the podcast, you always saw Jasmine for some reason just really just talking a lot to a lot of people and people loving talking to Jasmine. People would go to Jasmine to talk to Jasmine a lot. And it's like, she's not even in the alliance. Like, she's not even really embedded in things at first. And I think it shows that, and when it comes to the um, social game, like her actively playing the social game of Big Brother, she's good at that. She's also can win a comp. She also is good at the strategy, kind of. Like, she genuinely has great strategical ideas. She kind of implements them a little bit. Like, it's kind of weird how I feel like she actually is a good player. But I'm going to give her a 4.5. Oh, we do 0.5s. I forgot to tell you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give her a 4.5 right in the middle and move along. For Joseph. King Daddy like, Joseph. King Daddy. Um, I feel like for Joseph... He's an interesting case because I was not impressed by his pre um, jury stage. He did kind of not pre jury, but the first couple of weeks because he did kind of voice that he wanted to just sit back and observe and then start playing the game. And that's what he did. But that sit back and observe stage is, I feel, very dangerous territory because it set him back when it came to the gameplay. Everyone else was all the way in the game. And Joseph was like the only player not in it because of he sat so far back. Like, babe, sit up a little. I don't know. And I feel (laughs) like that that was uh, scary for me. And then when he started playing, he started playing um, very forward like and it was very dynamic and it was very much so um, open to everyone. Everyone can see it. And I feel like those qualities are qualities of someone who haven't seen the show that much. Because he has a sense of the game, but he doesn't have the awareness of the show and what he should actually be doing and how he should be hiding some of his alliances and not telling his alliance everything. So I feel like because of that, I kind of have to put him at a, you know what? I'm going to give him a six. I'm going to give him a six. I feel like I can't give him too much higher than that because of those kind of mistakes that he has from being a recruit, essentially. Mm. I think we can improve on those very easily though I will say I think I definitely like Joseph a lot as a player as the season went on you know like like you mentioned he was saying a lot of things in those early weeks that made me feel like oh Joseph really does not know what's going on because he was like you know I'm here to change the name of Big Brother like you don't have to lie you don't excuse me you don't have to backstab which you know you don't necessarily have to do in the game but he was to an extent of like, oh, we're all friends and I don't care who gets the money. Like, I'm just and it's like, uh-uh. Like, this is a game, babe. It's still a game. So that was kind of scaring me at first. But then as the game kept moving forward, especially when he turned 25, he realized, you know, I'm here to play. You know, he was a big, big strategic element in getting the leftovers together. Like, Joseph is someone, his social game was just so good. Like, a lot of people really enjoyed Joseph. And at the end of the day, he went home because of a twist. If that twist did not happen with the BB multiverse, whatever the fuck, Michael would have won HOA. She was not targeting Joseph at all. And he would not have even went home. And then even in, let's say, the twist happened. Like, the luck of the draw, he was with, you know, uh, Kyle and his silent majority. So he really got nowhere else to turn in that incident. So it does suck. I do think a negative about Joseph is just that he became very tunnel vision on certain things. When he want what he wanted to happen, he would go to a lot of his sense to make them happen. He, 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 I feel like he just really wanted to play which was something to appreciate. But it's like, like Farrell mentioned, if he knew more about the game, I feel like he would have known to not be so obvious. Like, you know, 
coming back and telling his alliance all of his information and all of his secrets really set him up to get targeted in the way that he did because they were able to bury him in such a way that he was never able to see because of his loyalty. I think for me, I'm going to settle at a five for Joseph just because I feel like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like he would definitely need a second chance. Like, I want to see him play a game again with more experience. Like, you see that a lot of times. Like, people who don't know the game and they come in and learn it and they get better. I feel like he's someone with the knowledge that he has. If he were to come back in a situation, he could really be a serious threat. I think so too. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I definitely like had a score in my head, and then after you guys, I <laughs> changed it. What was the initial score? I want to know. My initial score was a six. Hey. And I changed it to a seven. Ooh. Hey. No. Yeah. So this is why. Here's my thing. One, I had this in my head already, but she spoke that Lee with the twist. The twist being in the way of just like with the twist, he got put out. But I started thinking about a lot of things with Joseph. One, I have actual knowledge from the live feeds and from seeing what's on the timeline. Like literally the only season he's watched is season 23. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all he watched was people who ended up being loyal to each other. He did not watch the live feeds and see yep. us grappling <laughs> whether we were loyal or not. Because I don't know about anybody else, but me myself, I was about to leave it because I okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you, know, you see uh just that and like I'm the type of super fan that like I got into this game like four years ago, but before that, I just watched all the seasons. So I watched how everything happened. And I remember when I walked in that house, I was like, oh, like everyone's going to make known their side. So I kind of thought being in a cookout, Mm. like it was known, like, yeah, it's black people rocking together. (laughs) And I had to learn that it was a more subtle game and it was Mm -hmm. hard for me do that because I'm not a fake person. I don't know mm. how to do that. And so knowing that he had that knowledge and probably from his immigrant background, the way he approached the game, I'm not surprised in the way he approached it. But like you said, if he can learn this game very well, it does show the acumen that he has as a player because he's been he did what people can't do, which was he he influenced people. Like, Mm -hmm. for him to influence, people credit the leftovers to Kyle, but I personally credit it to Joseph because he's the person who started that fire and got people in there. And being able to influence people in the game is really hard. Like, that's really hard. It's only one or two people a season that can truly say, I have influenced people. Mm -hmm. And the the person who I can say that right now is Kyle and Joseph. Like, in this this season. Last Mm -hmm. year, Tiffany. Like, and? I don't know anybody. <laughs> like in terms of influencing, that's really hard. That's yeah. really hard to influence somebody else to do what you want to do. I tried mm-hmm. and I failed. I know how hard it is. Mm-hmm. So for him to do that, I got to put him a little more. So that's why I say he's a seven. I like that. I, I really do. Um, okay, let's get to the people in the game. No shade. Uh, <laughs> Let's start with Alyssa. We're going to go Alyssa first. Oh, I'm sick of going her first because she's not doing nothing. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go real quick. Um, last week, I gave Alyssa a hefty three. Woo, that was generous. I feel like, I will say, I feel like the further in the game we get, um, the kind of potential of her accidentally winning is kind of there in a way. In the jury, she has friends she has indy jasmine if kyle decides to stay in the jury and not quit she will probably have kyle that's kind of three votes that might likely go her way oh actually jasmine mad at that girl take that back take that back but um she has at least kyle in the jury and i feel like if she fumbles to the final two she girl she's not winning i'm giving her a two <laughs> Wait, like, what what <laughs> no because i really started looking at everyone and she can't beat nobody I was like, why yeah, am I, I even think, talking? I think, no, like, I will... We got a whole record game left. But go on, sorry. That's I, true. I think, I think, I do think 
she was on a path to potentially win with Kyle still being in the game. I do think that path has taken some turns now that Kyle is going out. However, I do think she can still have people on her side in that jury. It depends on who she's next to. She could be next to Brittany, who I don't believe will have that much respect. And Alyssa would have more friends in that situation. She could be next to Terrence, who no one really likes Terrence, if we be being 100% honest here. She could be next to Turner, who has lost a lot of respect as a player in this game. I do not think mm-hmm. it's down and out at all. Uh, however, Alyssa is just... Her game in general has just been very lackluster ever since the post pack is blown up. You know, she mainly has just been Kyle's there. little Kyle's little showman's girlfriend that he would tell information to here and there. He finally, you know, you know, uh, told her everything last week and fully, fully brought her into all the information. And still, she's not doing much with it. I think a few steps she could be doing now this week is solidifying more with uh Taylor, maybe solidifying more with Michael and Brittany now that she knows Kyle is going home. I think mm-hmm. she is doing good work. She has a relationship with Turner. She has a relationship with Terrence. She has a relationship with Monty. These are people who may not put her up. Um, So I don't think she's necessarily going home. It's just I don't know. Like, playing the game, I fear. I don't I, I, I don't. Of course she's playing, but it's just like She's definitely not the one in charge of any necessarily move that's going to be coming anytime soon, I feel. So I think for me, I'm going to keep it at a two as well, just because, <laughs> I mean, there's just so many other dynamic players in this top, going into this top seven, and she is just nowhere near that. Like, it, it, like, like those scenarios I mentioned, she's happy to be next to Brittany or Terrence. And it's like, can she get there next to Brittany or Terrence? Who knows? Ozzy looking like she's going to give her a, a 10. What's up, Ozzy? <laughs> No, okay, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say Alyssa makes it real hard. Like, Alyssa makes it real hard for us. And I say real hard for us in a sense of, like, I have been trying to build a case where there is nothing wrong with the Nicole F. getting carried game. Mm. Um, Because to an extent, now, I won my Detroit to Final Five, so I technically wasn't carried. But, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I leaned on the guys to help me out to get to where I wanted and like I have been trying to build a case for like yo like just as the men can lean on their masculinity it's okay for a woman to lean on their femininity it's okay like let's Mm -hmm. normalize that Alyssa makes it very hot (laughs) (laughs) and I used to be an advocate for Alyssa back in the I'll be trying bro Alyssa she be doing like things that are just not like bro like no like, mm-hmm. that's not the way you run. Like, wait, that's racist. Wait, that's not the way to go. Wait, you're not a good person. So mm-hmm. it's hard for me to do that. And I will still say I stand, I still be holding on to Annalise. People say Annalise the coast or whatever. And I'm still like, guess what? Annalise was close to winning a lot of competitions and she was just, she didn't feel like she needed to win. And I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you being whatever. <laughs> Ozzy, you are so sweet. <laughs> well, honestly, I just have been in the position. I don't know. I, I, I'm in that. People call me the Black Nicole F, and I'm like, well, guess what? Nicole F actually won. Oh, So I stand her. I got it. I didn't like her before, and now I'm like, yo, like I get it. Like mm-hmm. I understand the different types of ways. So my thing is, I can understand the different types of ways to win the game with. Alyssa, what I want more from her, I need her to turn it on. Like, right. she has to. Like, and she, we she saw Casey do it. Casey sat quiet for most of the season. She was in a powerful alliance. That's a different thing, though. She was in a powerful alliance. Mm-hmm. You know, and then she turned on with Alyssa. She's not a powerful alliance. And I'm like, girl, like, you cannot depend on Kyle getting you through everything, you know? And I get it. It's fine to have that shield, but like, I want to see that light in Alyssa grow. When I say I want to, it's just on like a game level, just having something interesting happen. Like, I just want to see like, okay, girl, like, let's see you like turn that light on, whether it's final five or wherever, like turn it on and then let people be able to see the person that you are. And so that you can put some of a story behind your game moves. Cause right now people don't respect your game. And people feel that the game that you do have is shrouded behind racist tenants. And I don't like Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I want to hope the best for her. So I'm hoping that. So I'm going to give her a 4.9. That is 
So we oh we go four point fives at the most. I'll give her a four point five. <laughs> I, I want to give her a five, but I don't want to give her a, all the way up. I want to, after this, after, I want to see her win something. And I know yeah. I didn't win nothing during this time, but I want to see her, I want to see, like, because she's not in a major alliance. That's the thing. Like, if, if she was in an alliance, I would have given her much higher, but she's not. She's just mm -hmm. a pilot. Kyle, Kyle. She's like, oh, she's like, oh, I need more. I need more from you, baby. Come on, babe. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you could do point five zero or one. Okay, fine. All right, all right, all right. Okay. But no, but but I I I, I support the. Uh, Are we, you okay we, with four point nine? We. Four, I, you said four. We're going to do point fives. We're going to do halves. Okay, do okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> you want to do a? Do you want to give her a five? I don't want to give her a five. Nine, don't give her a five. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, you're, you're the best. Um, <laughs> how you feel about Britney, Aza? Britney. <laughs> That's a hard one. Okay, so Britney. All right. My feelings aside, Britney's doing whatever she needs to do to get far in this game. And then Brittany realized that she can't win comps and she doesn't have um, influence over people. So she knows she probably needs to stick to Michael to get to the end. But what I don't like about Brittany is Brittany be reminding me about the women's I be working with at my jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I work in a very uh, Caucasian dominated environment, mostly white men, honestly, but at the same time, some white women, and like the way that these white women be treating me mm. is similar to the way that be Brittany be treating Taylor. Mm. She be playing her own game, but she be getting upset when Taylor plays her own game. Mm. And that's what bothers me. I gotta mm -hmm. say, like, I, when I, I don't want to bring myself up, so I'm not going to, but like, I don't like I don't like it when I feel like if you're gonna play a game, play your game. Right. Stop getting mad at other people for playing the game too, if you're doing the same thing. If you're doing the same thing, you have no like you don't really have any reason to like get mad at people. Like if you play a low game the whole time, I get it if you're mad at somebody else for not being loyal. Mm -hmm. But if you were not loyal, why are you mad at them? Mm. If you're making deals with other people. Cool. Why are you mad at Taylor for making deals? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Why does everyone need to play the game for you? And that's my thing with Britney. That I'm like, uh, about. Yeah. I feel like I feel like Britney, her game has just been so up and down this entire time. Like I think that her biggest issue is that she at least she set herself up to be in a position to where she needs Michael at this point. But Michael could beat her easily. Like, Michael is in a situation to where Michael he can beat her. Yeah. You, said, you said what? Michael Depp will beat her. Yeah. yeah, and it's like he's in a position to where his closest ally, his best friend in the house, he could just bring her to the end and, just, and, and beat her. And she knows that, you know, for her to win, she has to potentially make that move, that game winning move and taking out Michael. But it's like... Michael is sitting up here winning everything. It's going to get to the point to where after next week, Michael will play in every com competition regardless. So it's like, how are you ever going to be able to take this man out? I think, and that and that's the big thing because she's now in the final three with Taylor who can be her and Michael who can be her. So it's like, at this point, she's just moving forward in a position to where I don't think she can necessarily win this game. I, I can see her in the final three situation, which is good enough because she 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 can at least be in the position to make that move, which is great. But at this point, I feel like she's not necessarily playing to win the game. At this point, she's kind of playing to be there with Michael. And I think it, it's, it's weird because at the same time, it's like, should she win a takeout, Michael? No, but that's kind of just the position she's in in her game to where if he goes, she can be in danger. But if she stays, if he stays, then she it's gonna be harder for her to win. So it's really it's really bad for her. That's true. I think she's in an interesting vulnerable position, but I think it's a position that's decided for her. Mm -hmm. I'm like mm -hmm. for her jury management, no, don't take out Michael. Like, don't, because it's just gonna be weird. However, like 
Michael's a target. So go ahead and let him. If he gets taken out of the final three, that's great for her. Mm-hmm. You can go ahead and keep that thing with Taylor and then hope for the final three to be someone that she can beat. Like, mm-hmm. if she's able to beat both of them out and take somebody, then it's a different story. That's true as well. I think I think for now, I think I'm going to settle at a five for Brittany just because I think that's just my biggest fear. Like, moving forward, how is she going to get here? If she, how is she going to get there if she can? Can she eventually win? Because, like, we didn't really touch up on this, but even this week, she's even losing more favor because someone like Terrence, you know, who is he really to call out anybody? But, you know, he's very upset at Michael and Brittany for not sharing this information with him specifically because they shared it with Monty and Taylor and not him. And that they held on it for so long. In that house meeting, apparently, he did go off on Michael and Brittany regarding that. So it's just that could be something to come back and bite both of them at the end, you know? Um, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I do. I agree with everything you said. I just feel like, I just feel like the um difficulty for her to win is just too high for me to really go any higher than a five. Um, this next person is a zero. What do you think? <laughs> game wise, he's out of the game, so he's a zero. It's funny because we gave him a zero last week. <laughs> and now he go out. Seven. I got to. Girl, uh, most of the ones he got because he had to. Who are you talking about? Oh. <laughs> what? I know who you're talking about. Girl, okay. Yo, they look the so, same. Bro. You're talking oh, about. God. She went right to Michael. It's a seven for us. Let's keep going. I, I was like, let me be quiet. I was, I was going to go. I was going to go. I am so sorry. No, we're on Michael. What'd you say about Michael? Keep going. Bruh, when I tell you at the beginning of the season, I had the most difficulty differences on yo. I'm sorry, yo. That's how it be. Girl. I was like, who are these people who look just like each other, bruh? Why are you going they look them? exactly like <laughs> why are they cast mm. Um, but yeah, we're literally on Michael. So you can keep going. Which <laughs> I can't. Okay, let's sorry. We're gonna go to Kyle. <laughs> we really don't have <laughs> it's giving a solid four. Girl, he going home. For what? <laughs> four hours four hours in the house. No, I'm giving four him more a days. four on his ability to influence because okay. that's some crazy stuff. Because he influenced he influenced the leftovers. He didn't start it. Joseph started it, but he influenced leftovers. He influenced Terrence. Like he does have a gift of gab, and if he knew how to use it pretty well, he could actually do really well in the game. Mm-hmm. I, and no, I see what you're saying, and it's interesting because, and I just want to speak like you know to the podcast and to the listeners. It's interesting when we have <laughs> guests on because even last week, a lot of the when the guests are rating, you have to understand. Even though me and Lee, we rate every week. This is Oz's probably first time ever rating a player, period. Wait, is it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. And same with uh, last week. So it's interesting because they have to think about everything that we've already rated on for this one rating. I just want to let the girls know because the girls might be acting crazy in the comments. So I just want to let them know. Don't come for Oz. Because you will um, get God off on, okay? <laughs> you will get God on. It's going to stay a zero for, for me uh, and Lee. I feel like, you know, Oz up. Her generosity that she's brought to the rating because this, this, this was the podcast. I'm gonna give him a one, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he deserve a number, but I, mm-hmm. I do want to speak on that because I've been saying that he's going out. It's like Kyle definitely could have been one of the best players this season, um, one of the best players in Big Brother history, but he effed mm-hmm. it up himself. I mean, to, yeah. and it's it's crazy because it goes back to how he gets so much grace in the game mainly because he is a straight white male. You know, he was able to put himself in this great position, ruin it, and still end up in the position to where he could have potentially won the game. I mean, mm-hmm. this structure with Turner, Alyssa, Terrence, and Monty was a pretty solid structure moving forward yeah. until Michael blew it up on what he how, how he did. So it's That's like, true. even with him actively choosing to go against everyone who was loyal to him, he was still able to get the position that was – so it was pretty good. So he he definitely deserves more. I'm I'm just not giving it to him. I'm be honest. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. He does. He he definitely deserves uh what I won't be giving him. Um, <laughs> when it comes to the rating, um, he also deserves to get evicted. I don't know. Go home. Maybe. Yeah. And, uh, my thing is, oh, 
I'm I'm also biased because I I know social game a lot, or I send social game and people and like mm-hmm. how social game. Like I get that he's out now, but I think he's more out now because of the scarability of optics from the outside, mm-hmm. rather than people actual feelings on him. Mm-hmm. And like without the optics outside, without any unbotheredness, Kyle would have probably done very well. And when it comes to a, a actual rating, a four is probably literally accurate in my mind because they want to save him. That's they, the guy. They, they, they they that that a, look, Terrence is like he has a fighting chance. It's not like he's out of the water. Like literally, gameplay has actually not really shot him in the foot as much as you would think. Exactly. Yeah. Like Michael thought he ate, and he really did not. Eat and I think it. And I think it's because he was racist, and then came out. And freaking mm-hmm. blew everyone's game on the bus, which made everybody want like who would have known? Like, there's just a lot of things I'm just like, damn. Mm-hmm. Because even with all this, you wanted him. Like, I know people would have put Paloma's game at a zero, but Paloma had the whole house wrapped around her. Mm-hmm. Girl, you see, we gave her a six point five and a five. As yeah, her you know, like, weeks we... after she left, bro. Yeah, you know, Paloma. Paloma. People talking about people have Paloma in their mouth for a while. And mm-hmm. Kyle is also influential. Like he just had some type of that influential quality that yeah. I look. I got a type that I'm telling you that will never <laughs> ever influence me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, with many people it might, and I have mm-hmm. to acknowledge. Like, mm, okay, even Michael was like leaning with you for a bit until he literally cut him out, bro. Like right. that's. It's interesting, you know. Yeah, and I think if anybody should pull anything from Kyle's game, it, it's it's his activeness as a player because that's a lot of reasons as to why he was able to do uh, so successfully, even while being just terribly problematic. It's because you know when he wanted to do something, when he felt like he was not safe and he needed to pivot, he did. And it, a lot of people were like, "Why is he doing this? Why why is he making this move?" But he came out of it unscathed up until I mean, it caught up to him. It caught uh, up but to him. You know, he was doing pretty well for a while, and it, it shouldn't go unnoticed, but mm-hmm. it will today because he is a <laughs> <hard work. laughs> And I also want to say, like, my ratings are not going to be drastic. Like, they're going to stay pretty much amongst this maybe one Central or two of them below. Mm-hmm. But they'll stay around here because as a whole, I don't know if this cast is up to par strategically as other casts are. Just mm-hmm. saying. As, huh, as I agree. Cast, no say. As no say. No say. Arthur was like, mm, as Mickey McHugh. Mm. <laughs> see, so I think she, see, she, well, she, I, she, I just, I don't know. This is probably too. Like the woman last year. Oh my gosh. Yes, girl. Like yes. when you when you were in the house, were you feeling that already in the house? Like, ooh, these girls here are. I thought that in the house. I thought I, look, I bike and I'm smart. I mm. thought I was. Set. Mm-hmm. I didn't win no mental comps, <laughs> and I was top three in physical comps, but it wasn't yeah. winning. Like, it was always Tiffany and Alyssa that I was fighting with. Like, and I mm-hmm. bike, like I bike a hundred miles. Like, I'm very yeah. good at endurance. I'm very good at like I actually am someone competitive, mm-hmm. and I observed that our last season was competitive in so many ways. You had a lot of very smart people in the house, yeah. like. There were six of us that worked in tech. That's just us that worked in tech. Yeah. Business owners. Hannah was a freaking genius. Like, yeah, what? right. PB23 was such good cast. We're never going to get that back, I fear. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know if they will. Like, and in the physicality, in terms of physicality, like, I knew that I was always going to go be going against Alyssa and Tiffany. And Tiffany was mm-hmm. working on before she went on. Alyssa has a great physical mindset. Me, like... I thought I was good because of biking, but I was struggling, and I still didn't win every physical comp. Like mm-hmm. always, Alyssa or Tiffany beat me out. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, there's not much that people have to worry about physical wise in this house. It looks like, and competitive wise, <laughs> like, mental, like not that either. Like, there, it's just an easier house to be in. I, I ain't gonna lie. Like, That's why Michael beating everybody and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A shade either. Like I'm truly not. I'm just like okay. This is not as like hmm, okay. Like mm-hmm. you know, you're not really going against 
Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. I so, love how I love how no, I literally just, she gotta keep it real. Yo, I was a businesswoman, so she gotta keep it PR. We understand. Literally. <laughs> but we gonna say it. They so, ain't shit compared to Oh me my god, no. <laughs> I didn't say it like that. <laughs> I just say they did a real good job last year, y'all. Okay. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. They did real good last year. They did a great job. So, Aza, why did you rate Michael a seven? Because I heard you say that. I did. So, Michael's a seven because Michael has, number one, in terms of competitive ability, he is miles above the rest. Mm -hmm. In terms of strategic insight, I will always know he did something similar to me. So, when I watched him in his intros, I watched. He had a whole binder full of the shows throughout every season. Mm. with a note of what they had to do to get the final three. And I did the same thing because I I deal with Excel sheets a lot with my job, and I did that too. And looking at the my mess, best map, anybody that has that level of preparation has studied really, 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 really hard. And mm. I feel like Michael has truly studied super hard for this in the comms, in the best likelihood for him to get to the end, in the strategic insight, um, I think he has good strategic insight, knows how to use information to his advantage. And I think that even though people think he's won too much, in a lot of the positions he's been in, he didn't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving him a seven. I, yeah. I, I really I really do agree. I feel like he has um, phenomenal qualities. Like he's a 10 when it comes to comps. Like he's won damn near everyone he could compete in. He's up there, I think, when it comes to the strategy. I do think he really lacks the social game, in my opinion. The girls aren't, like, really gravitating towards him um, to be his friend. And I think his social game is where he lacks. But at this point in the game, baby, doesn't matter. I do feel like <laughs> Michael is kind of the person who's most likely going to win, in my opinion. Even though he has such a big target on his back. He just has to win one of the two competitions that he most likely will play in for the next couple of weeks. And since he's won so many, it's hard for me to think that he won't win um, at least one of the two. So it, it's kind of hard for me to see him losing. But I will say he's like the first winner pick <clears throat> that has had this big of a target on them this early, I feel. Like it's top seven about to be, and <clears throat> four people still want him out. Um, even though he can... he. We think he can win every comp if they slip in a luck randomly at top seven which we don't know and then the veto is freaking luck too then what or if he just loses the veto then he could be out with the wrong hoh and that's kind of because he doesn't really have much wiggle room in this game right now he's struggling if kyle if he didn't pull out the racism card and kyle didn't go home baby he was going to be looking real bad like mm -hmm. he would have had one ally and himself so yeah. I wanted to give him a really high score, but I'm going to have to keep it at the seven also and just, eh, like, good luck, sir. Yeah. I think I think for me, like, I was going back and forth on Michael all season because I always felt like, you know, he's in this pretty good position, but is a lot of that because of luck? Is that maybe because of privilege? Is that because of a lot of other things? And uh, I wasn't fully sold on, okay, Michael is really here – you know, it's not just a comp wins, basically. It's, it's way other factors to it. And I do feel like taking the per how my personal feelings are out with this move, I do think, you know, strategically, it, 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 he ate. Like, he, he, did, he did that. You know, he set a goal. He wanted to get out Kyle. And who's going home this week? Kyle is going home. So, you know, that's pretty that's pretty iconic on a big brother level. Like I said, I am upset on a personal level. However, you know... At this point, like Pharaoh mentioned, like he's probably just gonna win his way to the end. Like, who is getting this man out? You know what I mean? Like, even next week, you're talking about a, a, another back door. I mean, they have to hope that he's the one person to not get picked. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. those odds are, you know, you know, his win equity is huge. You know, I feel like I should. I'll probably maybe four, because it's just it. Too many few votes and too many few vetoes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. People are getting against one person. That's the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel like honestly, I'm gonna give him a seven as well. It would be way higher if, like Pharaoh mentioned, like I think the socialness, like people are, people have been wanting him out. They just can't really get him out. 
And it's like mm-hmm. they're probably still gonna want him out. I mean, it, it's to the point to where if he loses a competition, he's going home, and that's not good. You shouldn't be in a situation where you should only have to win. However, he's also shown that he's good at this game and so many other attributes. So I think the fair is definitely fair in this situation. The seven is fair in this situation. Mm-hmm. Um, how you feeling about Monty Lee? You should go first. You know, you- I I'm really liking Monty's game. Like I was, you know. Clearly, other than the other personal things he did uh, <laughs> earlier in the season, I've started to really Michael, Ma, Michael, so many people name matches. <laughs> Monty has really just started growing on me, like personally and game wise. But like specifically game, like I mentioned last week, like he's doing really good at minimalizing his threat level. Like you know, he was seen as this big target, you know, mainly because he was a bigger black man let's just be honest like i said but he himself has put in really good work to diminish that target and even now this week i mean moving forward he has terrence who wants to work with him taylor who wants to work with him turner like he has kept pretty good relationships with correct people i feel like moving forward in this game so the fact that he was i feel like on the verge of getting out like two weeks ago to now with kyle going you know, he ain't on a pass to win this game. Like, very much so. I feel like, I mean, would it be wrong to say he wanted to save his people going forward? Like, I feel like who's really targeting he him? Is. No Michael one's targeting him because they think he's about, with him and they think he's with them. Like, he's now able to kind of play in this middle ground. I feel like for me, it's a seven for him as well. Like, he's really showed this week that he's a contender to win it. And I feel like if he's able to get out uh, Michael, then, I mean, who's in his way? I am going to – I agree with your sentiments. I share similar sentiments. And it's the petty me that's giving him a six. <laughs> it's the first three weeks for me. I, I'm working on it, okay? Yo, we're all a work in progress, okay? I get it. And this is supposed to be – otherwise, I truly have been very objective. Yeah. While I understand and see his point in view and a lot of things, it's a six for me. Aza, I do have a question. How do you feel about the comparisons of Monty's game and Xavier's game? I think they both play very similar games. Okay, so you you agree? You did say that earlier. You feel like mm, yeah, I ain't gonna I, I ain't think, gonna ask it, but I was gonna ask. I, mind speaking a little bit on it i think they both play similar games um um i truly do appreciate monty's apology in the house like i think that was good and necessary mm-hmm. um but i'm not gonna put things on my behavior or one person what mm-hmm. i'm gonna instead explore the conversation is as a black person as a black woman who lives in the chocolate city um the things that many maybe complain about Xavier or Monty are things Mm -hmm. that black women face quite often Mm -hmm. in the world. So I can't like, I would rather not like kind of pigeonhole somebody or be like, Oh, you're this way. When like, that's something that's prevalent in our community in general Mm -hmm. or the topics and conversation that they might come up in. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's something that's quite prevalent in our community in general. And so that's something that we should probably talk about more, like the fact that that's more prevalent in our community rather than like, you know, yeah. But no, they definitely exactly. have some, I think they both, um, I, I will I will give the book good before the bad. I think they both know how to downplay situations in terms of like, keep things at a, like they, they're, they're always seen as person that kind of keeps the level head or the voice of reason in a lot mm-hmm. of things. Um, I think that they, uh, um, can downplay their threat level really well as well and work really well with people and a lot of people feel that they can trust them as well. Um, but the thing that could use work on both of them is I think they could both do better to protect black women. Mm -hmm. And instead of step, like, I think that's something that they could both improve. Yeah, mm-hmm. in their games. And that's not similar what they are now. Who knows? They're better places now, you know? Mm-hmm. But at a certain points in the game, I think they could have protected a black woman. Yeah. yeah. I I see that. Um, I feel like I agree a lot with what y'all said about Monty. Um, but honestly, 
I'm gonna have to give him an eight because <laughs> because and if y'all know me, y'all know I don't like Monty, so don't play. But yeah. honestly, I feel like I just feel like the fact that at this moment no one is targeting him at top seven when he is probably one of the better strategic players left in the game. Um, I think he's top two with Michael, probably. I also think he's probably one of the better um, competition competitors. Even though he hasn't won that much, he still has like a competitiveness to him that I feel like could help him win, especially now that he's going to be playing in probably every competition um, coming up. So I'm going to give him an A. I think it's really likely that he ends up being our winner. Um, I'm kind of... I cannot. Yeah. No, yo, that's why I'm like, yo, guys, please stop it. Like, we can't have this again. No, I can't. I was just gonna say it. I didn't want to say it, but I. I no, like, yo, you're saying this. So I'm like, no. I don't want it. Yeah. We but, cannot uh, have another clone, man. Come on, uh, we need another clone, right? No. I would definitely prefer Taylor. And speaking of Taylor, let's just get to Taylor. Um, I feel like I, I Taylor as a game player. I feel like, and I said this last time, and I said this the time before, people think too much on um, social game rather than anything, um, social game, strategic game rather than anything else. And I do like to rate on social game, which is why I gave her an eight last week and y'all was looking at me crazy. But I genuinely think that Taylor's game just isn't strategic based, which is fine. Um, so why I'm not going back to you giving Monty an eight? <laughs> I just no, I just said I felt like he probably is gonna win at this point. Like who else is gonna win? Like he there. deserves, he deserves, I guess. But um Taylor, uh her game isn't strategic based, and I'm not gonna keep saying it to y'all, but it's just not. So I feel like based on what Taylor has to go for her, I think she could be in a great position because after she survives this eviction, um no one's really going to be looking at her anymore. Michael has to go. Monty has to go. Even people are saying they want to nom Terrence and Alyssa. People are saying how Turner has to go. So a lot, and people are saying how Brittany has to go. So a lot of people have to go before Taylor. Um, and at this point, I think it's going to be very easy for Taylor to make it to the top four. And her being in the top four is very beneficial because if she can win those two comps or just one comp, then she could win the game because Taylor's going to get the jury votes. So it's giving a very doable path when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to winning the game. So at this point, I'm gonna give her an eight too. Oh, I think the later you get in the game, the more likely it is I give you a higher rating because it's only eight people left. So somebody gonna win. I have a one in eight chance of being literally right. Like I don't know. What that is. I think I think at some point the girls just need the girls just need to realize that Taylor is gonna be in final two. Okay. Y'all thought she was going home week one. Y'all thought she was going home week two. Y'all thought she was going home week three. Y'all mean y'all thought she was going home after her HOH. Y'all thought she was going home this week, and she's still here. She's, she's never going. going she's never anywhere. going. I don't, never like, going. I don't know. You gotta wake it up. I don't know if, where have you been. Taylor is not going anywhere. And the thing is, you got it. I, I, I gotta say for Taylor. I just need nobody else in that eight to realize her jury management. Yes, because it's on fleek. The way the girls leave, and it's like, oh, I, I love Taylor. Taylor. I, I want to vote for Taylor. So these the same people, girl. These the same she people. Is, she has been in that house. You get people lying to you every second, but you yep. get somebody who is consistent with you every single time. That, mm -hmm. that stuff stays with you, bruh. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody's gonna say in a jury segment. Oh, she didn't do this. Nah, they gonna remember her. Because mm -hmm. I always said it. They never. Jasmine remember her putting tail on the block or Taylor refusing to put her up. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. like, those things, and it's a risk. It is a risk to play that type of game, but it's not really even a type of game. It's just who you are. If you decide to right. stick with your values, it's who you are, and be the person that you were when you walked in that house. People remember that because they mm -hmm. remember, oh, wow, when 70000 was dangling from her face, she still treated that way to me. Yeah. Nah. She was playing a good game. In my opinion, I think she's playing the exact game she needs to play. And as long as nobody else in that house discovers it, mm -hmm. and realizes it, and realizes she's a threat, mm -hmm. I think how she's able to thrive right now is that I personally think that those other seven individuals still think to an extent that Taylor's not liked. And Taylor right. is this person, and they still think they're above her. 
And I want her to thrive in that and them to realize that before it's too late. So mm-hmm. I think Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm definitely going to give her a seven as well. Like, she's in her win equity at this moment. It, 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 well, her win has always been so huge, but now that she's in the position, she's going in top seven where Monty wants to work with her. Michael and Brittany still wants to work with her. Turner is now talking about pulling her in. She's in a situation where if she is on the block, she'll be next to a Brittany who's a target above her. She'll be next to Monty or a Turner. Like, so many people are targets above her, and People are just straight up not nominating her. I think the two big forces in the game at this point are Monty and Michael. And since both of them are kind of seeing her as a number for her, for them, I mean, she's just not going to be touched. And because she has this this beautiful story, I think she has played a pretty strong game. Strategically, she's had her issues, but socially as a player, like she has really worked on a lot of connections. I mean, these people have trashed her so much and then are leaving the house saying, you know, I think players Taylor's playing a really good game. I love Taylor a lot and things like that. Little small stuff like leaving clothes and in these um, mm-hmm. uh, luggage when she went off to jury. Little things like that is really making people appreciate Taylor. And I feel like that's definitely going to come to effect when she's sitting in that final two. Because she's at a point to where she's definitely going to be in that final three. And I feel like as long as she's there, she can win that final comp. <laughs> No, I don't like I win the game. Yes, like y'all, I don't like I said. I don't want to get too hype because I don't want to get my feelings let down. But y'all, like, she's like right, like she's on the optimistic. The intro, definitely. Like it's crazy because like week one when I'm sitting here like, damn, she really going out, and then. Grace of God, she stays. And then the fact that now she's still here, like she's mm-hmm. still here. Oh, and even this week, I felt the exact same way I felt week one. I was like, Taylor is not going home. Like, she's not going home. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. about y'all, but she's not. And now look at her, period. Period. I love it. And that's how God works, though. Like, that's got karma. People call it karma. I call it God. You know, like, you give and it'll be put back to you. Yeah, I don't think Taylor has put anything on this atmosphere of just bad vibes. Like, and when I say bad yeah. vibes, just like ickiness towards people. Mm-hmm. She's not seen her treat people terribly or anything. And all of this is just God. What do people call karma? God, the universe is just coming back on her. And exactly. let her come back. Go, please, like, go ahead. Let her get to the end. I'm hoping. Yep. Period. It would be, I think that would just be the great way to wrap this season up in a cute little bow. Like Taylor winning mm-hmm. would just be a nice little cherry on top. All the bullshit we had to endure. Like literally. Ugh. Um, who's next? Terrence. Ooh. We already went on our well, I already went on my Terrence spiel, so I'll just get straight to the rating. Um, for Terrence, I feel like when it comes to the gameplay, that honestly. He's not in um, the worst position. I do feel like people will definitely target Alyssa now that Kyle's gone um, if it comes to Alyssa him nomination. Uh, Turner has to go. Monty has to go. Like we said, Michael's a big target right now. And Brittany's the sub-target to Michael. So Terrence is kind of in that middle era area of the game-ish because people aren't targeting him. But he doesn't really have that many friends either. And that's why I'm kind of like, okay. Because he, he has Turner and he has Alyssa. Um, but nobody else, really. And I think that that kind of puts him in an icky position. I think if he gets to the end, it's going to be hard for him to win unless he's against someone like Alyssa. Um, but even in that scenario, Alyssa could, could easily beat him because she does have friends in the jury. So I'm not optimistic about Terrence's chances of winning at all, really. This man trying to save Kyle. I don't know what he's doing. Um, if I gave Alyssa a two, a one. Nope. <laughs> you know, you know my score. Oh, I was gonna give him a ten, oh, child. I was gonna go. La- I was gonna go last, Lee. <laughs> go ahead, Lee. Go ahead. <laughs> so Terrence, for me, like, yeah. like I, I'm I, like, it's crazy because like I. In the game, I don't necessarily think he's he's doing that bad. Like genuinely speaking, like his position, but like and I would I would want to give him a high score on the position. But then, like when you really get into some like, like I don't know, like the the game conversations, I just be like, 
where is Terrence? Where is Terrence at? Like, like I've mentioned before. I mean, if you want to keep Kyle for your strategic reasons, just say that. But he's not even saying that, so I can't even be like, well, at least you want to keep a number for him. Like he's walking around talking about something. I want to give him a chance to learn and grow. Like so, it's like I, I I couldn't even give him points off of that. I just feel like at this point he really has like some of the least chance to win in this house. Like I think in this top seven, he probably has the least chance. I feel like of winning. Uh, however, he is probably going to be there. And being there, you know, being there really, I mean, alone is really a lot. Because if he's there with these cons being more equitable and he snatched up an HOH and he sits there and take Alyssa, then where the fuck is we sitting at? A Terrence win. Okay? Like that, like, so, I mean, those things can happen. Uh, I think I'm going to just leave him at a three. Because I don't think, I gave him a three last week for the HOH win. And I don't think he's improved much, but he also hasn't declined, in my opinion. It's just, game-wise, him and Alyssa are in the same boat of where, like, where is it? <laughs> I guess we'll see if it comes. That's how I guess. I, Ozzo, I guess Ozzo will explain. Him. I mean, okay, so like <laughs> I understand Terrence B. Whatever. I gotta give him a five, and this is why. This is why. From last week's HOH, I saw that Terrence doesn't have a Terrence isn't exactly a go with the house mentality. Mm. The decisions that he's made have been decisions he has decided in his head, whether they have been bad or good. And they have been in bad ways that have hurt me as a black woman. You know what I'm saying? But with this last HOH that he did, for him to sit quiet and let everything figure it out is something that a lot of people walking in that house would not have been able to do. And I think it's probably his life experience and being a little older that can understand and get that. And I truly think that that was a move on his part that benefited him. And I think he did that intentionally. Mm-hmm. And I think he's operating more on a standpoint of like, I have nothing to lose. And I'm just going to rock with who I feel like I rock with. And I kind of like this cow nigga, you know? <laughs> now, if he had said that, and he had not said the very disparaging, hurtful comment to Taylor, I think mm-hmm. he would have been able to take that much better. But him treating Taylor with the way that he did and the type of decorum that he like operated towards her, it kind of muddles him asking everyone to give Kyle grace when he could not extend that same grace to Taylor. Exactly. And so I would probably rate him a lot higher but I'll give him a five because I do think that his last HOH was run well for the position that he was in. Mm-hmm. But in terms of his behavior, what he's done as Terrence, I am very disappointed by him. Mm-hmm. Um, who are we on? Last, but uh, certainly not. least. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, we have Turner and Lee. How do you feel about? I just think Turner, like I said, like he did not have to go into this week making that decision. I felt like he was either cornered by uh, Kyle. Uh, either either he felt what Kyle was saying was legitimate, that he was in the same position that Kyle was, and he had to make this move, or he just felt more comfortable with this decision. I, I don't think it was necessarily the right move for him. I do think it has now put him in a position to where he's lost, like I mentioned, a lot of in- win equity, a lot of respect in the game, and he's now in a situation to where his target uh, and the two other people, Michael and Brittany, that he has chosen to now you know, backstab and not talk to, they're all three in the game. And now it's going to be egg on your face, Mr. Turner, because if they, they're they talking about now, you know, they don't want to put up Turner because he made this move for them. You know, Turner is now feeling like he did with Taylor. Like, oh, I made this move, so I get to be safe because I did this thing for you guys. And it's like they're on that right now, but I do feel like if – Alyssa and Terrence are nominated, wanted to win veto, they have to do a, a renom or a backdoor. I do think Turner will still be on that list. And I, I mean, honestly, he deserves. I mean, he, he's right there with Kyle. I mean, a lot of times, like even today, Kyle came to him a conversation and he's like, you know, because Kyle has been like on his little apology tour or whatnot. And he came and he spoke to um, Turner. And Turner's like, you don't have to apologize to me. I don't care. You know, because the situation isn't that fucking big to him. And it's like, I understand as a white male, he probably isn't as affected by the things that were said. But it's like, he's definitely just been showing a lot of his ass recently. The thing is, I've been new. I always saw Turner as someone who was just, in my opinion, I hate to say it, a follower. I do think he kind of just goes with 
who he feels like has the most power at that time and who he, who he feels the, the most is going to keep him safe. And I don't think that necessarily is the correct move this late in the game. Like he should have took more, I feel like, agency for himself and did something that would have benefited him instead of a group or what he feels like what group would keep him the safest. Because, I mean, he even said it himself. Like whoever puts up Taylor, they get karma. So mm-hmm. I fully expect his ass to go home next week for putting up Taylor. <laughs> so for me, I, I say it's a, I say it's a five, because unfortunately he continues to be someone that people in the right scenario will still feel like they can use, but you know he's also an easy target for people like Michael, Brittany, and Taylor. So mm-hmm. I agree with the five because I do feel like his chance to win is still there. He's still good at these comps, these in-game comps. He might be able to win. And I he might not be targeted because Michael and Brittany don't necessarily want to target him at this moment. So he's not targeted recently. And I think for some reason he still might be able to get the votes to win. So I'll just keep him at a five. Hopefully it goes down to a zero and he's out. But we'll see. <laughs> um, Y'all got to be mad at me. God, what? No. Well, I think he's a six. Oh, okay. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. You scared me, Ozzy. I'm in the mood to say, hey, no. I have not given it. I, my, break, my scores have ranged from four to seven. I have not gotten anything over that. Yeah. It's ranged just from how I feel about this season. But the reason why I give him a six is because, one, he was one of the first people to kind of stick up for Taylor and to decide to make a decision besides his game to just be like, yo, I don't want this, mm-hmm. which I respect that. And I'll respect that. Um, the other thing is, I am biased for Taylor because I want Taylor to win. But I can't get upset when people make moves that they feel are best for their game, right. even if they don't benefit Taylor. Mm-hmm. And with Turner, to be stuck outside with nonstop music playing 24 7. And you see two people, you see Kyle and Melissa in a whole thing with themselves, and Joseph looks to be in an outlet of himself, and Terrence is freaking Terrence. <laughs> Bruh, I, I don't know. I might change my mind too. I might lose my mind myself. <laughs> like, outside, th- to be outside and music playing nonstop, that's like torture. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to sit there and like discount whatever or be like, well, like, why am I giving pass to this? But like, I can understand why Turner decided to do a fight or flight and just mm-hmm. kind of stick with what happened if he sees the HOH and two other people operating one way and this person in the island of its own. And then you're sticking with that, then you end up winning, which I don't think he should have won. I think that was a mistake, but he mm-hmm. won. And then right before you, your entire outside alliance is being imploded by like discovering that this dude is like making a whole race type of whatever alliance, whatever, you know? So I don't think that he he's playing a horrible game. I think that he's made some mistakes with some things. But I do think without the twist, I'm thinking about the twist too, without the twist, and actually as a game player, I got to give him a higher score. So... That's why I'm giving him the mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, shit, we done. <laughs> so, um, girl, we have Taylor at the highest spot. I think this is the first time this happened all season because we got the right people rating. Shout out to <laughs> um, Taylor is at the highest spot. She is our top rated person, followed by Michael and Monty, tied with a seven after her. Everybody else, Huh, losers. So <laughs> it's giving Taylor's probably gonna win, and I'm here for it. Shoot, I know that's right. All right, we done though. Oh yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Aza, so much for joining us and staying with us for two yeah. damn hours. We are these. Where we at? You said mm-hmm. Dallas. In Dallas. Texas. Dallas. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. You know, I was considering doing a house chops down there. Mm-hmm. And speaking of house shops, do you want to shout anything out? Do you want to talk about uh, <laughs> what you're doing? And how oh, you... Sure, sure. Yes, I have a, a house shops in Chicago planned September Wednesday, September 14th, if I'm correct. 
And then I have the finale on the 25th on a Sunday in Los Angeles. So would love for you all to come out. Um, feel free to come out. Would love for you guys to come out. It's going to be a good time. We always have a good time. We all have a DJ. You guys can try some of my food. And it's always good times. You can meet some Big Brother guests, too, besides me. Hey, yeah. come out. Have some fun. Her. We love a businesswoman. Come on. Uh. Yeah. If you follow me on um, Instagram, it's Wonderful Word of Oz. And from that Instagram, you can also go to my link to where House Shop is happening. Mm -hmm. And then on um, TikTok and Twitter, I'm Aza, A Z A H underscore Awasome, A W A S E M. Her. Yay. Okay. Yes. Um, check us out next week. We're going to be doing another weekly rating. Um, maybe we'll have a guest. Oh, we will have a guest. Um, and what else? That's it. Shit. Bye. Right. I will say watch Challenge USA, but I don't own it no more, so we don't care. <laughs> literally. I literally do not watch it. I don't watch anymore now. I'm not on it either. I'm like, I don't know. You need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter. It don't matter. Right. <laughs> We're good. All right. Bye, everybody. Mwah.